everyone. Welcome to the Sea Stories Podcast. My name is Drew, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Adam, Andy, Joe, and Josh. Today, we will be telling sea stories with veteran and former Navy sailor David Steele from, from his time serving in the, in the Navy with us. Hey, what are sea stories, you may be asking? Well, sea stories are exaggerated tales told amongst sailors, usually around some pints of beers. To honor that tradition, we would like to tell our own sea stories over beers chosen by our guest. This episode's theme is sour beers. <laughs> if you stick around till the end of the show, we will have a mini beer review. All right, once again, my name is Drew, and today I am drinking Blueberry Boyfriend Ooh. by Prairie Artisan Ales. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, it has a 5.4 ABV, and yeah, pretty excited. I'm not a not a sour fan. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> Adam, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Drew? Beautiful intro. Uh, today, I am having from Brewery Oma Gang, the Dream Patch Fruited Sour. I don't know if you guys can see that. 6.5% ABV, and... uh. I don't actively look out for sours, but I'm not afraid of them either. So we'll see how this goes at the end. Uh, what's going on, Andy? How are you? And what do you got for us? Good, Adam. Uh, you know, always good to be here. Um, I mean, as far as sours or anything bitter, I went with the Orange Crush IPA because IPAs automatically sour. <laughs> uh, me. Um, so they make you here. sour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Joe, I guess, since Drew did the intro. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, my name is Joe, and uh, I'm drinking the Guavitas Sour from Free State Beer out of uh, Lawrence, Kansas. I'm not a sour guy, but uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes once I get like two or three of these suckers down. And then... Uh, allow myself to introduce josh how are you what are you drinking i don't know mm -mm 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 -mm. well i'm drinking i'm not even sure this is considered a sour but it's sour pickle beer there's a <laughs> pickle place down here in texas that makes pickles so they decide to start making pickle beer it's called best made pickle sour pickle beer I actually have a spicy version too. It's five point five percent alcohol. It's a wonderful drink right after the gym because you're getting <laughs> some salt for sure. Uh, it's actually brewed with dill brine, so I mean, it's like <laughs> it's like drinking pickle juice. I'll just be honest with you. Anyways, <laughs> let me get a couple of them down and see how my uh, acid reflux goes, and I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, well, I thought we were just gathering here, us together, but I think I remember one thing. We have a special guest with a really cool last name, um, <laughs> considering he was on a Navy ship, which is kind of cool because it's, you know, made out of steel and his last name is Steel. And <laughs> anyways, his first name is David Steel, and I'd like to introduce you to David Steel, and we'll he'll tell you about what he's drinking tonight. David, awesome. what's going on? What's going on, Josh? Thanks for the great intro. Hello, guys. I, I miss all of you, first of all. Um, this is awesome. I'm drinking Sour Monkey by Victory. Um, it is 9.5%. So a six-pack oh. of this, and I'll be um, slobbering all over myself. Be in Drew territory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I picked up because I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is my, it's my first time, so I got to learn the hard way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See you later. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Sweet. Awesome. We're happy to have you, Dave. Yeah. Long time. It's, happy to be you know, here. A long one in the making, I think. Basically. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I, I, I've seen the podcast on Facebook and stuff, but being here is pretty cool. <laughs> Hanging out with my old buddies. Is generally a good time. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, that always was in my house when everybody showed up. 
Nobody got drunk though, but you know. no, we never drank. <laughs> that was the weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> Eileen never had to clean up the next day. <laughs> oh man! Oh, <laughs> I guess I will kick it off. Then, uh, as we do at the beginning of time, of our own times, not actual time, but uh, before the Navy, and since me and Dave have the uh, great honor of coming from the same hometown as we learned in our uh, Navy careers in Dahlgren one day, but that's a different story. Yep. Um, can I interrupt really quick? Yeah. Uh, can we just get the quickest bio, Dave? Like, oh, yeah. what was your job in the Navy? How long you served? And Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I w- along with the other guys on there, I was uh, an FC uh, spy guy. Um, I enlisted uh, six days after the attacks of 9-11. I walked in the Navy recruiter's office, and then December 11th of 01, I left for basic. Um, did that, did all my schools, got stationed on uh, the Cook, um, which is funny because I was supposed to be stationed on the, uh, God, what was the name of that ship? The USS Higgins out of San Diego. That's the order I picked out of school, but one of the kids I was in school with, um, something happened with his, I think it was his mom or something, so they swapped our orders. And I did not want to go to Norfolk. Everybody no. told me how bad Norfolk was, and you don't want to be there. And I was like, man, this sucks. And it turned out to be a blessing in disguise um, because I, I had the greatest time. Um, unfortunately, uh, right before deployment in 2005, I was training uh, with the VBSS team. And uh, my rappel gear, my pencil uh, malfunctioned, and I got injured pretty bad, th- uh, blew out my back and my neck. Um, so I'm now 100% disabled through the VA. Um after many surgeries and, and procedures and, and crap like that. So, uh, yeah. And, and in March of 07, they finally separated me, um, gave me a little bit of disability. And then, uh, my wife over the years has fought for more and more and more. And we can get into that. If you guys have any questions about the VA or anything like that, sure. don't hesitate to ask. Um, but yeah, I got out in March of 07. I moved back home to uh, Menor and, um, I was a maintenance technician for years for a large company called Avery Dennison. And, uh, yeah, now I'm retired. So, I said home, and I appreciate all you guys that go to work and pay taxes because you you, you pay my monthly salary, so I appreciate it. Right. So keep up the good work, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, sorry to interrupt, Andy. You could go back no, no, to fine. jerking yeah, each yeah. other off about Ohio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're you know easing into this new structure. It's not so necessarily format. The format's the same, but the structure is more present. But yeah. So uh, we grew up in Menor, Ohio, or as uh, former guest and good friend of the show chad conrad knows it as the center of the universe uh, he's not wrong yeah <laughs> exactly so um he just like me he went through uh men are high mm-hmm. back in the day uh back in the know, day what was your what was your high school experience and kind of like who were you in high school and, and that kind of stuff uh you know? So up until 10th grade, I played sports. Um, and then in my sophomore year, I uh, shattered my tibia and fibula and uh, my lower leg and had a screw put in. Um, so I kind of ended the, the high school sports. I still played uh, a little bit, but I, I, it was never the same. I missed a year in, in high school. You miss one year of sports and you're so far behind. Um, so I was I was kind of a jock, but not really. Um, I hung out with everybody. I, I kind of got along with with any everybody and anybody but i loved high school that that's um you know a lot of people look back at high school like oh i wish i was back then i actually loved it at the time i I really enjoyed it um mentor was great as you know andy mentor high is awesome it was um biggest school in the state you know yeah we had uh graduated over a thousand kids in my class in 1994 um so yeah it was uh, i loved it I, i I loved every minute of it. Um, I tried to get into the Air Force right after high school, but they said no because of the screw in my ankle. So then, uh, yeah, I had, you know, all these stupid jobs and I didn't want to go to college because I hated school. Like I hated the learning part of school. I liked the talking to the girls and all my friends part of school. Right. Um, so yeah, I just had some, you know, <laughs> odd jobs here and there. And then, uh, that was high school. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, cause you were, 26 I was I went, when I went in uh I was 25 when I enlisted and okay. then uh I turned 26 in April of uh 02 during tech corps 
Okay. And that's when uh, John Sweelan and I, it was my 26th birthday. We went to, you guys remember that bar outside of um, Tech Core? It was like behind the base, little dive bar. I forget what it was called. They used to play the midget skanker. porn. They used to play like the, midget porn and shit. Is in it that, the anchor? Is that what it was called? The skanker? I don't remember. But we were all there for my birthday. And uh, John Sweelan, you guys remember John? He got on oh, the yeah. ship too. Um, love that dude. Uh, he ate a back then you could smoke in bars and everything and he ate uh, somebody's lit cigarette butt and I was like oh he's like yeah that's the marines because he was a former marine and I'm like this guy's not, not gonna steal my thunder on my damn birthday so I ate a lit cigarette butt and it turned into a competition and we ended up people were just sitting there chain smoking to give us these cigarette butts to eat and he ate seven and he's like I'm done I'm done so I ate my seventh because I ate one after him and then I ate an eighth to, to beat him and then he like stuck his tongue to the ashtray that everybody was using that had like <laughs> that much ash in it and it, the tip of his tongue was all black with ash and i was like oh it's so gross and everyone's like oh john wins and i'm like mother fucking john's fucking feeling so i grabbed the ashtray and I was, ah. uh. <laughs> <laughs> went back to back to the barracks i puked out in the gazebo outside the tech core barracks and uh i burped cigarettes for like a week it was uh. disgusting <laughs> It was so gross. Like, oh. Yeah. And yeah. your recruiter so didn't I was, tell you anything about like those kind of experiences. No, my recruiter, um, yeah, he, he didn't tell me much about the real Navy. I don't think any of them do because if they did, you wouldn't join. It's <laughs> like, great. They're great salesmen. They should be used car salesmen. They're like, oh, you're just going to see the world. That's all you're going to do. You know what I saw? I saw Norfolk and I saw Jackson. So that's what I saw. I got <laughs> the injured. world. Yeah, I saw Chicago. I saw Dahlgren. I saw Norfolk. I see shit. But yeah. um yeah, no, it was um it was a good time. Yeah, I was twenty-five, I was the th- I think the second or third oldest in basic during our uh, we had I think seventy-seven guys in, in uh my class. Uh zero nine four, I'll never forget that. Class zero nine four, yeah. So I was the uh, starboard watch, so I had to write the watch bill, which sucked because Imagine if your that. penmanship wasn't perfect, write it again. This E isn't the same size. Like the fuck really? So, but yeah, I got, you know, I didn't have to do kitchen duty or any of that stuff. Like, you know, most people did in basic because I got out of that by being starboard watch. But yeah, I enjoyed basic. I, I would say like probably all of you, the first couple of weeks was rough because you're not used to the schedule. You don't know anybody yet. But once you start making friends and kind of understanding what time you're supposed to go to bed and wake up and your routine, I, I really enjoyed basic. I thought it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't want to do it again, to be honest, but I thought it was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who was it? Your recruiter, since we came out of the same recruiting office, uh, he had a gr- um, Jody. Okay, his name yeah, was, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't think of his last name, but he was an OS, if I remember right. Uh, I think I'm you're sure right. you do remember right. <laughs> and the only reason I remember his name is because in the summer of '69, Brian Adams, Jody quit, or Jimmy quit, and Jody got married. That's the only reason I remember Jody's yeah. name. But yeah, it was Jody, a um, little weird guy, little. But he was a nice guy. He was a nice dude. But no, he didn't tell me. Yeah, yeah, he was a good guy. He's like, oh, you're going to have to stay and watch sometimes. Sometimes. It's like 70% of your (laughs) career. What do you mean sometimes? Everything. (laughs) It's so once in a while. Yeah. So, yeah. So so uh, being the uh, old guy in boot camp, uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you walked right in there and you were like, this is the most serious thing ever. Everyone behave like getting up in everybody's <laughs> face, being a total douche about everything. Uh, at first I was real quiet. Okay. Um, and then I forget who the starboard watch was before me, but he, he, I don't remember if he got asthma or what happened. He got in trouble for something. And we were one of the classes. Remember you had to sit in school and learn and when you're dead tired all day, that was the most boring thing in the world. But, uh, we were in class one day and, and our, uh, he was, a. Uh, uh, what was his name? Chief Tucker. He was an FCC. He comes into the class one day, interrupts class. He's like, who here is over 21? Stand up. So like, I don't know, 10 or 11, 12 of us stood up. And he's like, who's over 23? And a couple of guys sit down while well, I ended up being the oldest guy still standing that didn't already have a job. And he's like, you're a starboard watch. I'm like, what? I don't, I don't want to do anything. I just want to be quiet and get my, you know, I just want to make my way through this, not ruffle any feathers and stuff. So that's how I became yeah. starboard watch. At that point, I started being a dick. Because I would tell everybody, I'm like, you want you want the midnight watch, MFR? Is that is that what you're saying? You want the midnight watch tonight? So there was one guy. His last name was Dennis. He had a big big head on him. 
I don't remember his his first name or anything, and I'm sure he won't watch this because I don't know what ship or whatever he went to, but he um he came by and I was writing a watch bill on the table one day and uh I had put him on the midnight watch before just out of rotation. I didn't do it to be mean or anything. I had to put somebody there. Well, he comes by and I was almost done with the watch bill. He nudged my arm as I was writing, made a big line across the paper, and I got so pissed. So he stood every midnight watch from that point, and he stood watch twice during Liberty Weekend when most people didn't even stand up once. So wow. I, I was that kind of guy. <laughs> I was. He's like, well, I feel you coming in. I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. Chief told me I had to write a watch bill, and guess what? You're on it. You're going to have the morning watch, and you're going to have the, the midnight watch, too. So sucks to be you. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, I was, I mean, I was a nice, I was fair, unless you pissed me off. Kind of like, you know, I, you get Joe, Josh, and well, you guys were all there when Chief Figaro asked me how I learned how to vacuum or use a vacuum cleaner one day in quarters or something. <laughs> Got myself in a little trouble there when my answer was, I don't know, Chief, my mom when I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, are you qualified Chief in Figaro. running that vacuum? Yeah, who mm-hmm. taught you how to use that? I'll never forget that. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Really? Is that really what he asked me? But. But no, I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't a dick in basic to anybody unless you, you know, pissed me off or something. I, I try to keep everybody out of trouble. I try. You guys know, like, I try to be like the big brother and stand up for, for guys and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, that would get me in trouble at times. Yeah. So you were post 9 11. Yeah. I was post 9 11. I was actually homeless uh, when 9 11 happened. I was living in my car. Oh. Um, and the night before September 10th, um, I was, uh, it was like, I don't know, maybe midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I was at a, an elementary school, Sterling Morton in the Headlands, Andy. Oh, okay. And uh, I was in the parking lot and there was a knock on my window and uh, there was a police officer there. And he's like, oh, this is public property. You can't be here, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I don't want to see you out again. I was like, all right, fine. Okay. So I, I figured I'd go sleep in my parents' driveway, uh, get up before they get up and, and leave because they didn't know I was uh, living in my car. And yeah. uh, I fall asleep in the back seat. I had a two-door Chevy Lumina, 94 Chevy Lumina. And uh, a knock on my window again. I'm like, what's this effing cop want? I'm not, I'm in private property. Leave me alone. I look up, it's my mom. I'm like, oh, shit. So I crawl up to the front seat and I open the door and she's like, hi, I don't know why you're here or what you're doing, but you need to come in. A plane just flew in the World Trade Center. I'm like, I don't care, mom. I, I got to go to work. I, I didn't have a job at the time. She's like, no, you need to come in and watch this. This is serious. And I thought it was like a little Cessna or something, you know, someone just drunk right. or something. And then, I, you know, we sat there and watched the events of uh, 9-11 unfold. And my dad was an Air Force veteran. And that's why I tried to get in the Air Force when I was right out of high school. Oh. Um, so I sat there and I talked with my dad for, you know, quite a while after, you know, after the towers fell and everything. And I said, uh, I think I want to join join the military. And he's like, well, why don't you sit on it for a couple of days and, and see what you want to do? And so September 17th of 01, I walked in and I said, uh, will you guys take me if I have a screw in my ankle? And the recruiter was like, what? I'm like, well, the Air Force said no years ago. He's like, we'll get you in. So I had to do the whole waiver and everything like that. But yeah, they got me in. Cool. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I don't think we ever knew or talked about like if you were I had any prior service members in your family. So yeah, I didn't really yeah, my uh, my my stepdad. I don't. I I I've met my real dad a few times, but I couldn't tell you anything about him. Uh, but no, my stepdad was. Uh, he was Air Force. He did four years right before Vietnam. Um, He's stationed over in England. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my cousin, John, well, he's married to my cousin, but John was Navy and he was in during the first Gulf War. So um, I went over and I I sat with him one day for a couple hours talking to him about the Navy and everything. And uh, he was on the USS, I think the Missouri, he was on one of the battleships. Um, But yeah, I talked to him for a little while and I I said, yeah, I think the Navy is the direction I want to go. So that's what I did. Yeah. And I, and I met all you yeah. great fellas. I had the time of my life. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, man. Um, so 9-11 was a driving factor? Like, oh, it was huge. Like yeah. Percentage-wise? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was 100% the reason why. I went. Like, I had thought about it. You know, once uh, I, I was uh, engaged to a, to a girl back then, we had dated for quite a few years. Uh, we split up. Um, I found out she was not as faithful as I thought she was. Um, so we split up and then that's how I ended up uh, losing uh, the, the uh, townhouse we had together. And then um, I was just down and bummed out and depressed and everything. So I ended up quitting my job and thought, Oh, I'll just go find a job anywhere. And 
I didn't and ended up homeless. And so I had thought about joining the military a couple of times uh, prior to 9-11. Um, but then when 9-11 happened and I sat and watched, I was like, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't want this to ever happen again. Maybe I can make a difference. And after that Navy conversation, were you set on the Navy or were you considering the other branches? I, I knew I wanted to go to the Navy recruiter first and see what they had to say. Um, yeah. And if I didn't like my options and things like that, then I was open to the Army or Marine Corps. Um, it, my, my selection went uh, Navy, Army, and then Marines would have been the, the selection I made. Um, but yeah, he pretty much sold me on the Navy. He talked about it, how much he loved it. And I have all the places he got to see and, and do and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, man, that sounds awesome. He talked about all Chicago, the places. Chicago, Dodd, and Jackson. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> every Navy guy talks about all these great places. I'm like, tell me an FC that served six years that didn't go on a deployment. Yeah. Uh, there's probably one in the freaking world. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. This is the guy. <laughs> right. yeah. But yeah, so 9-11 was definitely a huge, I would say 99.9% of the reason why I joined the Navy. So how did it's OS2 Jody Ritz that like came to me in a Yes, that's right. Jody Ritz, yeah. that is it. Yep. I would have never guessed that. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how it, like Got a I, lot of information I, stored in that head. Yeah, I know. I don't know why, but anyways. So did he sell you on AECF or did he say no, tape so, drive in there? Right. So I went to uh after I took my ASVAB and all that, it was it was Halloween night. Um, yeah. 2000, 2001, I had to go down to maps to pick my job. And so I go down there and I sit down with the, whatever the job recruiter is called. And he's like, so what do you want to do? He's like, you scored well enough. You could pretty much, you know, do anything you want to do. What do you want to do? And I said, I want to work on computers. I wanted to be an it guy, but I didn't say it. I, I just said, I want to work on computers. Yeah. So he, you know, that was the old bullshit move on me. He's like, oh, you want the advanced electronic computer? And he says computer louder than he says everything else. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah you want the advanced electronic computer field. I'm like, yeah, that's computer. I heard computer. That's what I want. What do we work on? A freaking gateway freaking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how old is a computer on that ship? They had some good marketing back then. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I signed up and I thought for the longest time I was going to be an IT guy until I got to basic. And, um, I was talking to, to my my uh, RDC was Chief Tucker and uh, he was an FC and he's like oh you're gonna be an FC or ET you want to be an FC you could be an FC I'm like well I just want to work on computers he's like yeah you're not doing that <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm not doing that that's what I signed up for it's like no you're gonna be an electronics technician or a fire controlman those are your two choices I'm like well what about an IT he goes you didn't choose IT I'm like mother they put the wool over my eyes and fuck me didn't even lube me up but again. I think it was another blessing in disguise because I wouldn't have been hanging out with these bums. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got to yeah. see the, the great cities of Dalton. Right, right. I, I, I mean, I fell for that too. I mean, I was. Did you? Be working on computers, but. Sure. Yeah. sure, sure. Quickly did I ex- learn. This that, is only Excedrin, um, so you guys know. I <laughs> it. <laughs> First ever ecstasy on a podcast. Yeah. Now I suffer from severe headaches. Now I have something called occipital neuralgia from my fall. So that's what I want for acupuncture today for. I try and relieve that. So just Excedrin. Yeah. So was, you said you were going to go to the Higgins on um, San Diego. Was yeah. San Diego on your dream sheet or like? Um, I wanted, I actually wanted Hawaii because I wanted to be as far away from home that the orders put, gave. Right. And uh, my, my roommate and I, um, we were neck and neck all year on uh, one, two in the class. And uh, he ended up beating me out by like, oh, God, it was like 0.7% or something like that. Oh. So he got the first order that came up and it was Hawaii. And um, there was a San Diego, there was a Mayport. I think there was like like a Washington State or something, like something in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest yeah, or something. Or, or whatever. Um, and then there, it was all Norfolk after that. And I knew the one kid in the class, uh, you know, I won't say his name or anything, um, but he wanted uh, San Diego bad because that's where he was from. Um, but he finished like fifth in the class out of like eight kids or something. And uh, so I took the Higgins because I didn't want to go to the Northwest where it rains all the time and stuff like that. So I'm like, no, I'll go to San Diego, California, Southern California, right outside Tijuana and Mexico. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm there. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I got called into, uh, there was a senior chief down in Dog, and I got called into his office, and then there was some Red Cross message or something that came in. Um, and so and I switched uh, orders. Uh, I just said his name. Edit that out. Um, 
yeah, if he said, uh, we got to switch your orders. Uh, he's got to go home. So you're going to the Donald Cook in Norfolk. And I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> and I think the Higgins, if I were, I think the Higgins was DDG 76, if I remember right. And I was like, oh, that's the year I'm born. Sweet. It was meant to be. Right. Nope. But so, yeah, so that's what happened. Um, I was, you know, I was really upset in, at first about it. I thought, man, I'm getting screwed over. This sucks and all that. But um, another blessing in disguise. Everything lined up because I, yep. you know, I look back on it. And had I not gotten Norfolk, had I not stayed in Dahlgren for that extra time uh, waiting to go to, to the cooks, you guys were on deployment yeah. um, at the time. And that's when you went and got, you know, half of a deployment or whatever with them. <clears throat> um, that's when I actually met my wife. I think so, you know, had all that happened the way I thought it was going to happen, um, where I would have been an IT or I would, I would have went to the Higgins, whichever one of those would have worked out. I would have never met my wife. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, everything happens for a reason, man. And uh, so here we are 20 years later talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, yeah, we first crossed paths in Dahlgren in C-School. It was in uh, the lunch line. It was at the, yeah. the mess hall. I was serve, I was on holds. And I was serving breakfast, and that was the best holds job. There was this this FC two that was uh, on holds with us, and she was getting ready to go back to the fleet. And um, her and I had to drive somewhere on base. I forget where. And she goes, "Hey, listen, there's going to be some jobs opening up at the on the mess decks. She goes, "Take it. It's the best job." And I'm like, "I don't want to do like kitchen duty again all over like week five or whatever it was in basic. Luckily, I didn't have to do it, but I'm like, I don't want to do that. It sucks." She's like, "Listen, you're going to work a couple hours a day, and that's it. You don't have to. You could eat all you want, drink." all the pop soda water whatever you want <laughs> she's like trust me you want this job i'm like all right so i told my my roommate and uh they needed four volunteer five volunteers and so i told my roommate and, and another friend of ours i'm like listen yeah. i got the i got the scoop this is this is it this is legit and they're like i'm not i'm not volunteering for that I'm like i'm telling you man she wouldn't lie to me so we took it and it was awesome we got to be there at like zero five every day all we did was make the the rolls and we served the yeah. food and then we didn't have to clean up all the ms's or cs's or whatever they're called now they had to do all the cleaning and everything so we just we made the rolls buttered them and served breakfast and so we're serving yeah. you know eggs or whatever and here comes you know this this guy through the line he's got a menor wrestling shirt on him menor is, it, is that menor ohio and he's like yeah I'm like, holy <laughs> shit I'm like I'm from Menor, Ohio. <laughs> so we talked for what maybe two minutes, three minutes, because there's people in the line. Yeah, yeah, the line, yeah. Yeah. So I would see him come in. I'm like, ah, matter what's going on? He's like, hey. And then yeah. five months later, four months later, whatever it was, I got stationed, I think, in August of 03, I think is when I got finally got to the cook when you guys were in that weird dry dock or whatever that was yeah, where they yeah. were doing all the work. We were at, Hard to find area. When we were in MHI, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was called. And uh yeah, I was on I go to my first. My first day, I go to quarters on there, and I hear I, steals a dick or something behind, like steal. I hear something I'm like what? I turn on there's the Cavill, and I knew him from Tech Corps, and I was like, oh my god! And then standing next to him was you, and I was like, oh my god! I know both of these guys. And then Sweelan comes along, I'm like oh my god, it's like a freaking reunion. <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah, I thought that I always thought that was kind of amazing that uh, <clears throat> that. You and Sweden were pretty tight in uh, Tech Corps and yeah. A school and C school and everything, or not C school because he no. went to he went to ET. Yeah, yeah, and then getting on the ship, being and then you because I remember you two always hanging out together. Oh, we did. We hung out all the time. You know? during, uh, but you were also the you know roughly the same age, and everybody else yeah. a bunch of kids. So we yeah. didn't go out to yeah. the bar or anything. Right. That's why him yeah. and I hung out so much because because we we're the older ones. And then you know you get on that ship, and yeah, I mean, Edwards was there. Oh, it was crazy, dude. That you know, ship like, was so much. You were like, you're like holy shit, and it's like six, seven people I know here already. I did. It was. It was like a reunion of Tech Corps. I was like, yeah. what is I knew Conrad. Well, he didn't come till later, yeah. but when he came. I and the funny thing is, and Chad knows this, so if he sees this, it's not a big deal. I couldn't stand <laughs> because yeah, he, was so, he was an asshole instructor yeah. in A school. I hated that dude. He's a cock man. And he comes to the ship. I'm like. I think I told Drew because I think Drew's the one that told me he's like, Yeah, we're gonna uh FC1 Conrad. I'm like, it better not be Chad Conrad. He's like, Yeah, I think that's him. I'm like, this dude is a dick. I'm like, I don't want any, don't even put me near that dude. And then he ended up being a great guy. We had to become good friends. And you know, he's like, Oh, I was just a dick because I could. I'm like, We iced him out though for like <laughs> we iced him out for like a week, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was fun. Like, that was such you, a dude. 
And I didn't, I, I, and I hate to ask this, but I'm pretty sure, didn't FC1 Wallace pass away? Is that true? Yeah. That, that's yeah. Point. yeah, I mean, he was a good dude, s and but the one story I have of, he was in my duty section. Him, I used to sit and chat all the time up in... Uh, um, Radar too. Yeah. And the one time Drew and I were up and Drew... <laughs> One of the funniest lines I've ever heard in my life is just two words, and it made me laugh so hard. FC, you know, he was a good guy, but he wasn't a, you know, a real pusher. Like, if he asked you to do something, you said no. He was just like, all right, I'll go do it. So he asked us to do something. Drew's like, well, we're not doing that. Well, anyways, whatever Drew said, Wallace looks at him and goes, bullshit. And Drew just looks at him back and goes, bullshit, bullshit. I'm like, that is the, like, what do you say to someone that calls bullshit if you don't feel like sitting there and arguing with them? He, I'll, I'll trump your bullshit. Bullshit. Bull, like some of you are playing cards. There's an ace. Two aces. What are you going to do? I laughed. I still, to this day, that'll pop in my head and I'll laugh. I'm like, bullshit, bullshit. I'm like, I've been, and for 20 freaking years, I've been waiting for someone to say bullshit to me. Just so I could throw that line out. And I, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but yeah, rest in peace, Walsh. You were a good guy. Um, you know, him and I used to have a lot of chats about Disney trips and stuff. He used to take you as a good dude. Yeah, yeah it was a good dude. It was yeah, one that's of funny, man. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll never that. forget that, Drew. Bullshit, bullshit. I'm like, that's the perfect freaking company. Oh, gosh. Play. So when we when you checked on board, uh, you were, uh, we were in that. Uh, MHI or. Right, MHI. We were not in okay. drive, but we were in a yard period. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I guess yeah. you didn't get the, I mean, I, I don't really remember what it looked like we were in port. All the doors were taken off the ship. You had to go to that like weird parking lot that was like hidden. Yeah, behind. yeah, I like, that gravel back parking lot. Uh, all all these uh, civilians were on the ship. All these contractors, I mean, so I didn't know who was Navy and who was. I was so freaking confused when I got. Oh, well, then you didn't get to. Yeah, so you didn't get to like the first ship you you know walk up to and be. I mean, no. it wasn't. You didn't get the awesome. No. It's in, in port, and you're walking up the. Oh man, that's and rough, my, dude. My first time on the ship. I was underway away from the pier was when we had to go down to pier six because uh, hurricane Isabel was coming Yeah, and we weren't seaworthy to go out. So we had to go up against the double pier and yeah. we just rode it out against the pier. And so my first time going down the water, <laughs> I was stuck on board. I was stuck oh, on board. Oh, oh, it was terrible. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> so yeah, that was the first time I was ever on the ship away from, from any kind of dock or pier. Might be the like worst that. sailor you've ever had on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. super boring. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> that that hurricane shit was, was I mean, legit though, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that was that, I'm like, and, and I remember I forget who it was. Um, I don't I don't remember who, but he's like, you know, the ship is like like I'm like, man, this sucks. He goes, Oh, this is nothing. I'm like, what what? Goes, okay, <laughs> I just wait, wait till you get like eight, ten foot swells. And I'm like, I uh uh-uh, uh-uh. I, I don't want to do this anymore. No. <laughs> Where's the army recruiter? <laughs> um but then you get used to it. Yeah, I remember you uh checking on board. I remember, I remember people asked me about your when you when you when you when you when you, they got when they got their orders to the ship yeah. or whatever you know and i you know everybody i was like i talked to you up dude i was friends with you you know yeah yeah we used to, you know, I, you, video games I used to uh, pool down you know, not knock on your door and stuff when you were uh you had a in your whatever building you stayed in i think in c school I come by and oh, knock we on your were... door on like a saturday when i had to do like internal rover yes. the building or whatever and just like yeah. chat with you for a minute yeah that was uh when we got to when we got to C school in Dahlgren, they were giving everybody the share a room barracks. I forget what building numbers they were or letters yeah. or whatever they were, but there was that one that was like a hotel. Yeah, and uh, you got kind yeah, of it was a it was, nice one where like the space com guys were. Yeah, so two guys to a room, but you had your own bedroom and you shared the common area of the bathroom and the kitchen. And uh, so the girl that was given orders, my, my buddy that I ended up being a roommate with, he kind of flirted with her a little bit. I was like, man, I would like to stay in here. And she gave us a room in there. So that's just out of chance. That's yeah. Joe, Joe would come by and he'd be in his whites or blues or whatever season it was. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm Rover or whatever. I'm like, oh, come on in. And we sit there and watch TV or whatever. And then I see him on a ship. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. How did I? Why does God hate me? And keep You're me right. <laughs> yeah, I can't get away yeah. from this. Meanwhile, I had to go in there and break every. Me and Andy had to go in there and break everybody in and shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you know so, we had to let everybody. Do you remember, know. Uh, Joe? Do you remember when I got in trouble for 
we were my class in tech corp was called the god we got in trouble because we had to try to overthrow our class leader <laughs> oh yeah. yes yes i do remember that i got Nonsense. i had i had to rewrite the entire ucmj for something that i didn't even know i did and i was so pissed <laughs> I was what? taking a I was taking a test in tech core. I had I had missed a day. I had my wisdom uh, one of my wisdom people. So I missed a day. Well, that day I missed happened to be a test. So I go in the next day, and I have to take this test. You remember we kind of sat, you know, in a it was like a horseshoe shaped room, square, but looked like a U or whatever. And um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm on a corner desk. So the kid sitting right over here was his back was facing me. He hands me this piece of paper, and I thought it was like an answer sheet or something. I didn't know what it was. So I just kind of put it down. I'm, you know, back on my computer. He's like, no, no. He's like, just sign it. Just sign it. I'm like, well, what is it? He's like, just sign it. So I open up. There's a, like six or seven names signed on there. So I thought it was like, Bert. I didn't read the whole paragraph. I'm like, oh, okay. Sign my name. Pass it along. Like two or three days later, all these chiefs and officers come in. And they're like, when I read your name, stand up. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay. So-and-so, 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 David Steele. And I'm like, what the hell? I stand up and we were the mutiny class. <laughs> so we we walked out, we went down to this other room and uh, I mean, they lit us up because this paragraph basically said, we don't want him to be our class leader. He sucks. He doesn't know what he's doing this and that. And I, I didn't know. I mean, I signed it. It's, I, you know, legally it's mine, but I'm like, this sucks. I need to do this. So yeah. Uh, Ricketts FC one Ricketts was the tech core. One of the tech core officers in charge. And uh, he he called me uh, Mick Pond Steel from that point on, and it was Master <laughs> Chief Petty Officer the non quals because he refused to qualify me to go out on leave until I get to shoot <laughs> UCMJ rewritten. <laughs> so I had a stander outside FC One Ricketts office, and I had a clipboard with paper, and I had to write all was it thirty two articles or whatever the UCMJ. <laughs> so the kid next to me, thank God, was dating another girl in the class, and um. I had gotten roses delivered to my room that weren't supposed to be to me. And I didn't know who they were, the name on it, I didn't recognize. So I just had them sitting there. It's still in the box and everything. So I told the kid sitting next to me who also got in trouble. I said, hey, I said, uh, do you want to give your girlfriend some roses? I said, I got a dozen red roses on her hand. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what do you want for? Well, he had already turned in his UCMJ. And I think his name was FC1 Hart, I think was his name at the time. He was the one going through them all. And he he made some red marks only on the front page and he didn't do it. Like he only read the front page and marked it and they threw it down next one. Yeah. So the kid rewrote his front page. So there was no red marks on it and gave me the whole thing. And I turned it in and got credit for it. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't end up right now. I wrote like four articles and then I, I gave up and cheesed it. Um, but yeah, I was Mick Pond steel master chief petty for, or yeah, of the non quals. <laughs> and that nice. sucked. When all the guys that have been there after me are going out on leave in their civvies. And I'm like, can you guys bring me back like some liquor or something? <laughs> Sneak in a bottle. I'll go down to be the messenger of the watch. And I'll pretend I'm checking your bag. Yeah, that FC1 thought he was so clever coming up with that acronym. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I was so mad. It's pretty good. I, I, it's kind of like good. I, either one. <laughs> I want to use it in my life, but nobody would understand it. Right. Yeah. It sucked. I mean, to I, be I fair, you did like break the number one rule of the Navy. Like, I did. Don't commit mutiny, right? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I thought I was Steven Seagal on, you know, a ship and we were going to overthrow it and take out all the hostages. I thought I was going to be a hero. But, but also, um, like, imagine having, like, 20 years later, looking back on it, you rewrote the UCMJ because of a, you didn't like the tech core class, class leader. leader. Like, how yeah. trivial of that right? is. <laughs> right yeah i mean i mean i guess they could the punishment could have been worse i yeah. guess yeah. yeah but i felt it was to me it was a little childish the punishment because you know if you're talking in class i will not talk you know the bart simpson on the chalkboard i will not talk in class. Yeah. you know it's like come on dude, really so my plan was to never write it my well, plan was to take so long death yeah so my my <laughs> whole plan was to just get through tech core without ever writing this and move on to a school yeah what are they going to do um but then you know my buddy's like i'll take those roses I'm like i'll take your ucmj yeah <laughs> so we traded and i got credit for it and i got qualified and i was able to go out and have fun and that was actually right before my birthday so i got to go out and eat cigarette butts as a prize 
Awesome. <laughs> well played. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so with your, I guess your first underway being the worst underway. Yeah. See how I did that? First you know? and worst, you rhymed. Yeah, sick, right? So uh, you, what was your, like, well, I guess when you when we finally did, I'm assuming we probably went out for like three days and came back. Yeah, like, you know, we did a lot of those couple days and this and that. Um, I actually liked it. I really did. I I didn't like sit and watch for five hours because it got boring. I mean, you know there's nothing going on because you're 20 miles outside of freaking Norfolk. But um, no, I enjoyed it. We used to, God, we used to go to mid rats and play cards and dominoes and i enjoyed i loved everything about the navy except getting yelled at because i have an attitude yeah and the watch standing oh and the watch standing that That food wasn't too bad though was it no actually it wasn't as bad as people said i loved the chicken cordon bleu oh (laughs) i could still eat that yeah (laughs) Talk Let's about it. it a lot. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Give it to it. Give me a big plate of it right now. I'll eat. Those hamsters, <laughs> man. <laughs> but then we got the because we had the cool. Uh, real the real quick, that, are you yeah, yeah. are you team chicken cordon bleu or team hamster? Do you okay, know what I, I'm talking I, about? No. Oh, thank God. That means he's cordon bleu boy. I'm right. Cordon right. Bleu. Proper. I think that was my favorite meal we had. Yeah. But apparently, I, after. Well, uh, I don't think the hamster caught on when we were until on the yeah, it was after I was out when people started calling oh. them hamsters. Yeah, the chicken that makes sense. Were I mean, it looked like little hamsters, like little yeah. cooked hamsters. Yeah, it's a weird pet peeve that I have. Like it irritates me. It's so ridiculous. I don't know, <laughs> huh? What the kids yeah. call it now? Yeah, <laughs> kids. We were a lot more. So, uh, we were a lot more. Um, refined back then we called it cordon bleu yeah we were we were uh high end <laughs> real fancy we were like we were the cadillacs of people back then <laughs> all of us fancy folk <laughs> <laughs> from what miami and kansas and ohio texas hey nope. dave uh we're gonna get continue on with your story but i just want to talk to the, our audience for really for a minute yeah, really quickly yeah, yeah. um like oh well, we'd love to hear from you guys if you guys went through similar experiences if you have beer recommendations if you'd like to be a guest if you served with us and just want to say hi we'd love to get an email from you just email cstoriespod at gmail.com that's all one word c stories s-e-a stories p-o-d at gmail.com all right back to joe all right uh yeah so uh what was your first uh, Liberty Port then? I mean, it had to be Mayport. I think that was my first Liberty Port, and you came on board um, like, right after I did. Yeah, it was it was Mayport. Um, I think we went to Unless Mayport we two or three times. Super dope time in Yorktown. No, you weren't there for the first Yorktown trip. <laughs> I the only time I went to Yorktown was just for a weapons on load. That was oh, you, I don't think, yeah. I think it was like a day. I mean, it was like we were there for a couple hours. We did a weapons on load, and, and then we oh, left. Oh shit! It was back. a couple hours. It seemed, I mean, maybe it was longer than that. Days. I don't, was it? I don't, day, I don't remember. Days. You probably yeah. sat inside and complained the whole time while the rest <laughs> of us are out there building missiles with our bare hands. <laughs> probably, you're probably not wrong. Yeah, that's very accurate, um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out there sweating like animals. I think, huh? actually, I think, Joe, weren't you and I on FSA duty at the time? That was one of my best. That's one of the no, funnest. No, actually, times I was not. I was ever. not. Okay, then it wasn't then because you and I were FSA together. Yeah, we were for, oh, for, my for a God, time. Was that we had the best. Who was the kid that you used to? Uh, we won't say his name, but you remember? Oh my God, you you made his life hell. That, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, <laughs> it wasn't. Dude. It wasn't so much me. There was there was other no. people involved. No, but it was ninety nine percent Joe. Oh my God. <laughs> Getting them all riled up. Ninety nine percent. That was uh, the first time I ever got in trouble on the ship. Um, the person in charge of us, if we're not gonna say names, I won't say his name, but um him and I ended up being really good friends. We played basketball and softball and stuff together, but uh he was mad at me for something. I me and uh so another FSA were talking and he's like, Oh, you got something to say? And I gave him the childish, this is an A and B conversation, see your way out of it. <laughs> so he took me into the scully and, and him and I yelled at each other for like five minutes he threw plates at me and stuff broke them behind like wisdom by my head and broke them next to my head and stuff that was the first time i ever got and i'm like this is gonna be a long long naval career if i don't shut my mouth and i didn't, <laughs> I didn't shut my mouth 
And for our uh, civilian listeners, FSA, FSA is field food service attendant. It's basically yeah. like a a little uh, six month tour you have to do on the ship where you help out the uh, kitchen staff on the ship. Yeah, you do dishes and and stuff like that. Their food and stuff like in that. the floors. Everybody's got to do it. And I, the trash I, room. As much as it sucked, we had fun. Joe and I and and the other people we had we we had fun. Yeah, that's that's when I found out Joe's love for um, Jewel, the singer. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that song I came still- on. <laughs> Joe's he's got the hose, the squirty hose. He's doing he's doing the the dishes, and we're, we're all standing and they're you know drying, putting away whatever we're doing. And what was the what's the name of that song that came on, Joe? You were meant Foolish for me. Games. Foolish no. games. Yeah, it's foolish games. It's like standing in the rain or whatever, and Joe squirts this thing straight up in the air and starts <laughs> raining down. I'm like, that was epic, dude. <laughs> took your coat off and stood in the rain. Yeah, and he's like, took your coat off, <laughs> stood in the rain, and he squirts it straight up, and it all comes down on like last dance. I'm like, this is awesome, dude. You should be an entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that doing time. those like karaoke's and stuff in that oh. in that uh, scullery school yeah. around in there. <clears throat> All right, so man, man, Dave, just naturally, dude, you're covering all the all the all the hot spots we want to hit, dude. So oh, I'm sorry, like, I'll slow down. Yeah, no, I'm you're good, dude. Ahead. I feel I apologize. You're good, man, because I like we we do like you know we like to uh, you know piggyback and circle back and you know all sorts of backs, man. Just to, you know, we'll we'll get through all the stuff. But you know, Don't and it's funny that. too because I tell people these stories and they look at me like, eh, not really funny. <laughs> yeah, if you were there, it was hilarious. Yeah, right. So to be able you to talk to you, to be able to talk to you guys again that that were there and can be like, oh my god, dude, that was so funny. You know, it feels good to finally be able to talk to someone that's like, I remember that. Yeah, I man. remember that. Yeah. I know what you're talking. You know, you say FSA and you tell them what it is. I'm like, okay, so you did dishes, but be do. <laughs> I'm like, eh. You don't understand. In the Navy. <laughs> I was an electrical technician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah people you, know. eating. you don't do dishes for three hundred people. Yeah, you know, they just spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars training us, so that I could go spend my first three months at, shortly after doing dishes. The boat. <laughs> like I can barely get around the ship on my own. I know, and I, you know, like at least I can get to the mess decks. I can get to yeah. radar three, and I can get to my rack. That's you know, all I know. I nothing else about pretty much anything, you know. And, and you're and you're you know now you're doing dishes for yeah. three hundred people, and it gets ruthless. You know, they were. Yeah. You know, the, people like to pick on you when you're new. Oh, you just got to take you take your lumps. You have yeah. to. You, you don't want to be the guy that takes it too serious. No, like you know, I don't want shit of it. No, it man, is what ahead, it is, dude. man. Everybody's you know, done it. Just get it over with. Hit me with the pipe bomb or whatever they called it <laughs> when they threw in the threw the tray at you through the window. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all right, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah, like, fire in the hole. Yeah, fire, fire in the hole. hole. That's the one. That's the one. thing in there. It bounced around in that little tiny place. Oh, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, that would. Times. You know, you. I mean, yeah. Nobody meant it to be, you know, super mean, just to be kind of a dick. No, nah, it was just. <laughs> it was like hazing. It was, you know, I hate to use that word because it's so negative now. But I mean, that's really what it was. Yeah, it was. It was hazing without any of the weird, like, sexual stuff. <laughs> right. It wasn't like college hazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not on a high school wrestling team. No, no broomsticks. No broomsticks. Yeah, it no. was just no. you know. <laughs> Throwing making, stuff, <laughs> throwing, it was just throwing your, your silverware hell. at somebody. It's, yeah, it's, it was just making your life hell. Real rated G stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to throw my food in the trash. I'm going to throw the whole tray with my leftovers at you in the in the yeah mustex. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. Nope. Keep on washing because they're stacking up, brother. Oh, good time. Uh, good time. <laughs> Need another beer now. So, uh, uh, how about duty days, man? Uh, how about those things? Dude, those were tear. You know, the worst was uh, weekend duty. Like, we, during the week, it didn't, like, you had to be there anyway, so it wasn't really a big deal. It was weekend duty days that sucked. Yeah. Especially, what was it, Saturday? Because you knew you had to come back Sunday? The next week or whatever? Because it was every yeah, six you days. Yeah, Friday, then you knew you had to come back Saturday. Yeah, and I was like, oh, man, I got weekend duty. This sucks. But, um, no, I mean, you stood your watch. You had your drills. You know, we did a lot of the, you know... Um, security alert drills and stuff like that and, and stuff so anyway i mean it wasn't terrible looking back at the time it sucks because all you want to do is go home what did you just sit and, and see it what did you just sit in combat systems central i don't remember what it was said for uh yes yeah so i either had topside rover 
or uh, what was it called when you're on watch and CSC? What did they call that? CSC. Said, yeah. Or right, I see that that was the only two watches I've really ever had. So it was a top side rover kind of stunk, but you know, you just walk around for five hours with what was it, an M14? Or I don't know. I don't think you're accurately remembering the no, Norfolk he's not. He's winter acting, nights he's <laughs> when you had that officer to the deck that would kick you off of the heater after five yep. minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I had Edwards in my uh, duty section, so he used to help me out because he would be uh, officer of the deck once in a while. And if I ever had it on the yeah. same watch as him, he would he would go, yeah, just come down here and chat for a little while, get warm, go do your walk around, come back. So he he helped me out a lot. He was a good, him and Bacher were, were good dudes. I miss the I miss I miss everybody, man. I that remember good, good ship. I remember like getting to know the OOD so you could come up with conversations that you could bring up just so that you could <laughs> stay, you could stay there by the heater and just <laughs> keep them talking. <laughs> like, like you're some journalist about to do an interview. Like, come find just, out what this guy likes and doesn't like and what's his hobbies. And, and you're going to stalk his Facebook page. <laughs> my, if, my space, had, if only was my space back, back in the day. <laughs> if only they had Facebook back then. What, what do you think, think about azaleas? <laughs> You're into azaleas too. Yeah, oh, I love them. I, I, do. I have so many. I can't of get them. enough. What's your favorite? You know the yellow yeah. ones? Yeah, blue. <laughs> Wait, well, blue. There's no blue. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> I'm colorblind. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And uh, maybe not in North America. <laughs> <laughs> the exotic ones that I get are blue. What are you talking about? You get the cheap ones? <laughs> but yeah, they, it was a lot of that. So I would go down to, you know, I'd go up to Radar 2 and, and, play xbox or halo or whatever you know we were doing then or i would go down and sleep behind the sig pro down it was at caesar 2 yeah that that little hum would just log you to sleep yeah just get used to the the 400 hertz and everything yeah right <laughs> that that um, that awesome heat that came off that thing yeah. just do that i'm just telling you the perfect if, if i could afford a sig pro i'd put it next to my bed <laughs> I, like if I, if I, you won't know I won the lottery, but there will be signs. Big pro from the Spy One Bravo or whatever the hell the version was we had. I'm, the hell? Well, I won the lottery, guys. I sleep like a baby now. Yeah, I have my bed is now sixteen <laughs> Mustang jackets <laughs> and one peacoat yeah. for a pillow, and and I just. <laughs> I just burrow underneath that, oh, and uh... <laughs> you know what's crazy now? It is so weird. I uh, because of uh, all the issues I have with uh, the uh, pain throughout my body and the, and the nerve damage and everything, I have a horrible insomnia. So I sleep, you know, maybe two hours a day or a night. Um, but you know, looking back, I'm like, dude, I could sleep anywhere. I fell asleep standing up in boot camp, Same. getting ready to go into church. You know, I would sleep on a hard floor. That those decks up in Radar Two and stuff, they weren't comfortable. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can sleep like a baby on one. Nowadays, dude, I can't sleep. <laughs> I, have the most, I bought a $7,000 bed after my back surgery because I thought it would help. I don't sleep any better. But back then, boy, I could sleep on anything. Put some non-skin I, on that, on that bed. That, I think that's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> you just need six of your best friend's jackets to lay down on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, I gotta go outside. I need my jacket. I ain't getting it right now. You're gonna be you're gonna be cold and wet, buddy. I'm I'm comfortable. It took me an hour to get this comfortable. You ain't getting it. <laughs> but uh yeah, man. I, I it's uh I unfortunately, you know, I, I didn't get to make a deployment with you guys, which is my biggest regret of my career. Um because you know that's what we worked up for and you know i felt like i let the team down when that happened um but yeah a lot of the underways i made i think the honestly i think the longest time i was ever underway was two weeks during com 2x right before that deployment before i got hurt we went down to fort lauderdale mm-hmm. um i think that's the longest underway i did, <laughs> did to be honest yeah, I so. and i thought two weeks was forever because it's ever fucking that, that's a good amount of time though <laughs> you know so um yeah, every other way, I, I, I kind of, I, I liked it because I tried to build myself up for a six month. You know, I try to, okay, how am I going to do this for six months? How am I going to do this? You know, that, and, you know, obviously, you know, Drew and Josh and, and Joe and everybody that's, you know, been underway for a while, you know, kind of helped out and coached me along and told me what to expect. But uh, yeah, my underways were, were short. They were a couple days here, a couple days there. That was, that was all I got to do, unfortunately. And then what I got put on, on holds. 
Did you go on Com 2X with us? Yeah, I was on Com 2X. Okay, that was a month long. Yeah, I think it was two weeks. Then we pulled into uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and I think we did two weeks back. I think that was the full month, but it was broken up, I, I believe, with that Fort Lauderdale visit. Port Everglades when we pulled it. Remember our ship hit yeah. the pier? <laughs> there was that, that big ass cruise ship with like five thousand people on it looking down on us. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, yeah, we're the Navy, we're the best in the world. And all of a sudden we tugbo pushes us back into the pier, big chunk of concrete falls off. We got a huge scrape. Yeah, yeah. don't worry, we got this. We're professionals. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're yeah. used to this. We well, do it all the time. Didn't push us. It was or the drunk somebody did. The the skipper took the the helm or whatever. And yeah. That. And he just uh, did that, and they're like, "Yeah, I guess what's going to happen? We're going to uh, pull back into Norfolk with that side uh, facing out." And that yeah, because because we got out as soon as we got out from the port, he took the ship in or the the little uh, rib boat or whatever, and yeah, yeah. had to look at the damage. And yeah. we're like, "Man, you know, do we got a hole in the boat? What do we got going on here?" And you know, luckily it wasn't anything super major, That'll like the time like the time we broke the screw right after we got underway. Remember that? Yeah, it was oh, like geez. we were underway for like. Two hours. Five minutes. We were yeah, supposed like, to go out for three weeks, and then we broke yeah. uh, MRG. They're like, yeah, uh, we're heading into the main port. We're, we're, we're limping back to Norfolk. We uh, broke a screw, and we're all like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three-day weekend. Hell yeah. <laughs> we're not in engineering. <laughs> Sucks to be in engineering now. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was when we were supposed to go on that sink X and uh, yeah. shoot the harpoons at Morrow's old ship. He was going to sink his old his old vessel. Oh, Who was on board when we did that? Drew, you were on board when we did that with that. Was it the Spanish Navy or the Mexican Navy? or uh, Wasn't it the French? The Sink X that we did? When we shot those harpoons and then remember the oh. helicopter land, the helicopter crashed and mm-hmm. pulled yeah, body, I that. Like, body parts out of the water and stuff. And Really? Oh. Yeah, dude. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> wow. I, the only thing I remember, I mean, nothing that, well, I shouldn't say that severe, but I remember we were on a on an underway, and there was some guys that fell off a sub or something that went missing, and we helped look for them for a little while. Really, I know we yeah, shot. You guys that's the that? only time I ever seen the harpoon shoot. Yeah, I, harpoon I, I never got, I never got to see the. Harpoon yeah, we, we like couldn't sink the ship. They they made it like sink proof, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like they put they closed all the watertight doors that, and yeah. they. they Pumps like all of the like you know the gas well, out the oil out and then they put yeah. in like a flotation like liquid or something. What was going on is that we would shoot some we would shoot at it and then the scientists would fly over there to look at it, assess the damage and see you know if it, I guess what we said it, if it, it would would, it did, would have yeah. sunk or whatever yeah. And I guess like this helicopter on the way back it didn't make it and just crash landed in the ocean man next thing then we were like scooping up like i'm talking about like helmets and boots with feet still in them and holy oh wow i don't yeah, i didn't i like, never even knew that was before parts. that was before well, I was like, evidence yeah, bags before we were there but... evidence bags they were putting them in evidence bags and, and they had coolers God. they put them in coolers and stuff too they had to get all the coolers i think on the ship and they put all of the yeah the wow, parts in, in the coolers. Yeah, I was no, talking about that to somebody the other day. I was like, man, this crazy shit happened to us one time. And I was like, I remember they were raising money on the mess decks. For the families and stuff? Yeah, I remember. Because they always had like a little jar over by the salad bar and stuff. Wow, I never I never knew that. I mean, I knew the cook was the first one for the coal bombing. Right. You know, but I didn't know. my was, time, yeah. Yeah, that was 99, right? 2000? I was in boot yeah. camp. I was in boot camp when that happened. But I didn't know about that helicopter crash. Wow. The cook, you know, I tell you what, I, I I still keep up with the cook. There's a lot of stories, you know, Russians shot a missile over the bow or whatever. And I'm like, that cook has been in some dirt, man. <laughs> that, been, been that, that, girl, that girl has seen some stuff. Like, yeah. You don't, you don't mess with the cook, man. I, I don't care who the crew is. That ship will mess you up because it's like you meet people that you know, like these old Vietnam veterans. Like, man, that dude's been through some shit. The cook is that person. <laughs> the cook yeah. has been through and seen some shit. First to launch uh, tomahawks into Baghdad during shock and all. I mean, it's just a yeah. badass boat. It really, I tell people, I'm like, dude, it's the most badass DDG in the Navy. People are like, oh, like, if you don't know, you don't know. I that that has that ship has some scars, man. Yeah, it's. I wish we were. Over, I wish they were over in the Red Sea right now. Taking care of business, but 
Well, I heard that they left Norfolk and went to Rhoda and were home ported no, there. Are they, they did there and they came back stateside to Mayport. Yeah, now that's where yeah. they're home based in, in Mayport. Mayport, Mayport yeah. yeah. Okay, because last I knew they were in Spain. Yeah, they did like a rotation out there when we oh, okay. started putting forward deployed ships in Rhoda. Man, that was such a fun ship. Yeah. Just looking at it behind you, Andy, I I, I love that girl. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I I I I miss it. And it's one of those times where I was talking earlier about, you know, in high school, people look back and they're like, oh man. But at the time, you don't realize how good you had it. Yeah. That's my Navy career. I didn't realize at the time because you think it's going to last forever, you know, four years, whatever. It seems like a long time. But looking back, I'm like, man, that was such a short amount of time. But man, we have so many memories of that ship. And and, and I wish I would have respected a little more than I, like I was, a, I was a hothead and, and stuff. You guys know that, but um yeah, I, I, that was a good ship. Good ship, good crew, great time to be there. Um, just everything, everything lined up perfect uh, for for me to be on the ship until the accident. Yeah, yeah. and um, so I know we didn't do, you know, we didn't do deployments or anything like that. But yeah, so unfortunately, if you guys are watching this, I, I'm I'm not going to tell you about a deployment story. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of stories, but they're not deployment stories. So well, I let's get into those uh, those fun stories because oh, uh, I remember having a great time with you on the ship, even when oh. we were underway or if it was a day or two or whatever it was. Um, we had so much fun. Do you remember the uh, video game that we used to play? Like Oh, non-stop? college football. Yes. NCAA college football, EA Sports. <laughs> Drew was always Miami, and I was always <laughs> Ohio State. And those were the two rivals at the time because they played in the national championship. And Drew used to whoop my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did get a win in there, I let him know. I, yeah. He knew about it for three days straight. Yeah. And then he'd be like, well, let's play tonight. And I'm like, ah, I'm a little tired, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to go off on the win. Like, I'm riding into the sunset. I finally <laughs> beat you on our 152nd game. Yeah, and it was funny because the announcer, it was like Kirk Herbstreit, or whoever was the announcer. <laughs> yeah, the and he was always whenever like if I could stop Drew, like you know he would punt or or turn over on downs or interception. Mm-hmm. Kirk Herbstreit would always say, "All right, we're gonna uh, take a break in the action while the offense comes on." He was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be a break in the action." I'm like, "Come on, dude, my offense isn't that bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can run the ball a little bit. <laughs> I can't throw. <laughs> you intercept everything I throw, but." Uh. Uh, they talked so much shit about Ohio State. Oh, God, he did, dude. He And I just couldn't fucking beat him. And he used to make me mad. I'd sit there and watch. I'd be like, I'd play that game. I'd beat the computer like 300 to 2. And then here comes Drew. I'm like, I got him, dude. I, I have the plays <sighs> now, man. I know the plays. And I would run this guaranteed touchdown. I'd be like, go. Throw. Interception. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like, the computer the, never intercepts it. How the guy would, would have jumped 12 <laughs> feet in the air to catch the ball. <laughs> and Dave yeah. would lose his fucking mind. Dude, I would throw chairs. I would, <laughs> I would, I would yeah. get so mad. I can't tell you how many times I threw a chair across Radar 2. I, I, oh. I used to get so mad at that damn game. They're bringing it back. They, they, you know, they, and, I, and so now that it's online, Drew, if you get it, brother, you let me know. We're going to... Uh, I, yeah, I can stream now. I'm gonna stream you and me playing some NCAA yeah. football. It's fucking on, dude. Right. It's on. I, can't wait. I was uh, <laughs> as soon as I heard that they were coming back with that game. The first thing I thought about was you was beating my uh, ass again. And, uh, <laughs> I, I have got to uh, stomp you into the into the ground. Um, yep, God, we used to play that for hours, and I would get yeah, mad man. for hours. That was uh, that was some good times up in yeah. up in radar too, you know. Um, it, I think it's one of the things that we all kind of like miss from the military, you know. And I think that goes for for all branches, but that camaraderie, you know, like the things that we 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 were just together. We hung out Absolutely. like all the time. Well, I mean, and that, and that's you know, I tell a lot of lot of uh, you know my civilian friends, I'm like, military friends, even if though you're only with them for a couple years is a deeper, different friendship just because you're so close and you're living together and you're eating together and sleeping together and and not that way, but you know what I mean? Down in Bernie, (laughs) but (laughs) some of us, (laughs) that didn't sound too good. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a friendship that is different than, than anything else. And uh, I miss it. I cherished it. It was awesome. You guys were awesome. And uh, Drew, 
I'm going to beat your ass in NCAA. <laughs> uh, maybe. I mean, maybe if you use Ohio probably, State now. Probably not. But, <laughs> yeah, if they have, like, legacy teams, like, if you can pick the 0-1 uh, Hurricanes and I can pick the 0-1 Buckeyes, that'll be a, a good – did you see Ken Dorsey now is the offensive coordinator of the Browns? Yeah, man. Yeah, he's, your quarterback. Uh, he's, he didn't do shit in the NFL, but I – th- I think he's the only player from that Miami team that isn't in prison. I'm not sure. <laughs> you're, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or at least have some kind of charge. Yeah. Well, I remember a lot of, uh, I mean, we'd be brushed on it, but your parties, man, used to be like epic. Uh, dude, yeah, um, I, had, I had the perfect house. Like yeah. when I rented it, like I, you know, I mean, I, I got married and, um, I need to bring her down. She was living up in Altoona, Pennsylvania when we got married. And our ship was getting ready to leave for like a two-week underway or a week underway or whatever. I think it was a week underway or whatever. And so we hurried up and got married, and I, and I brought her down. And um, I told the the guy, the realtor, I said, I need a house to rent. And so he showed me this house. And Eileen was from Norfolk. She graduated from IC Norfolk High School in Norfolk. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this will be great. My wife's from here. She knows this town. you know. And if you guys remember, there was an empty building next door. Yeah. So I had no neighbor on one side and the other side, uh, Sheldon, we called him burn. He was the coolest dude in the world. So we had, I mean, we were loud and, and drunk outside on the side patio with the You're ridiculous. Remember that he, somebody, I think it was my neighbor. Sheldon was throwing away that black leather couch and we all picked it up and threw it over my fence. And said, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cause I didn't have any chairs or anything out there. <laughs> so we're like, Hey dude, there's a, there's a, couch in the trash next door let's go get it so like five drunk sailors go over there we're carrying mm-hmm. this couch you know like the seals carry a raft you know they got to do that for <laughs> for <a raft>. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. we carry couches that's, that's the kind of sailors we are we carry couches and throw them over stockade fences and oh man we used to god Dude, that halloween party you had that, that was time. that not off the chain dude i did that was that the <laughs> That was one of the that 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 it was all dudes that I knew. There was, yeah, <laughs> my buddy was looking through my uh, old Facebook or something pictures, and there was the picture of me, you, me, and you in the garage as our eighty singing as rock star. I, I, I had the rock god costume. God, dude, if I put that on today, do you know how gross that would be? Like those <laughs> those spandex, those like size small spandex, and <laughs> that little. Let me see you in that wig shirt. again. <laughs> Yeah. Justin Bell was there. I might there still have. I might still dressed have. as Jesus. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and was so <laughs> fucking drunk. I mean, out of he was fucking hammered. He was he was, he, he was eating those Jello shots like. Oh. It just that got to the point where he was just eating to eat. It wasn't like he was already so drunk that like there was nothing you could do. No. He was just like like thought it was food. I guess I don't know. <laughs> we were doing. <laughs> that was we were doing. Weekend. The, like Smeelan lived in your house. <laughs> like we Dude, he lived in my house for like a like I almost started charging him rent. Yeah, oh, so damn long. and he stayed drunk that whole weekend. The whole, like the point that's that what, we went and saw Saw at the movie theater, dude. He snuck in like six beers. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, if the movie's quiet, and it, the, the thing is, it was at a quiet point in the movie, and you hear, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> dude, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you want one? I'm like, how many of those do you have? He's like, I think I have a six pack. And they're like yeah, around his was... weight, like they were on his pants. And so I'm like, what are you doing? he drank like a six pack during the movie. Yeah. Empty beer cans on the floor of the theater and stuff. Yeah, that was well. We went to Worsley's or something to get a carpet cleaner for your Worsley's like, then. Yep. And then like Spielin's in the car with me. We stopped. He needed he wanted to get like cigarettes or something at that 7 Eleven yep. on Frederick. Yep. And um he goes in and he comes back out with like the modellos and it's like oh i forgot to get cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did he went in for cigarettes and comes out with beer and he didn't even, i don't think he went back in and got cigarettes like now nah, i got what i need yeah <laughs> he just kept drinking <laughs> dave do you remember when um we were in port and the no one could leave the ship and uh i think uh, like they made us clean like i don't remember we had some co- sort of inspection um but they didn't let anyone off the ship, and somehow me and you convinced them to let us off the ship. We went. It was um, Inserve. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, it was Inserve. <laughs> yeah, and they let you and me off the ship. We went and like bought beer or something, didn't we? Yeah, like some store or something. 
we went to the grocery store and we got those I don't even know what it was, but it was like some some orange like like yeah. liquor. Yes. Yep. It was like a CSO or somebody is like, oh, you guys go get this and you come right back. Yeah. Like, you had to okay. get cleaning supplies. Oh, like yes. Surge or something called Surge or something like that. Um Inserve. Inserve. That no, was that the malt liquor was like oh, orange, oh. orange I don't can. I don't remember. No, it was a, I think it was in a bottle if I, yeah, I don't even Surge remember, was, man. Surge was a soda. It was a was a soda pop. Surge. If I remember right, but I think yeah, we I got it because we were like, we can chug this like super yes. quick, and we did in my car out in the and parking we, lot. Yes. The, I had that, I had that Camaro, that black Camaro with T tops. <laughs> we chugged all those fucking beers and walked yep. back on the ship, completely <laughs> fucking hammered. <laughs> oh my I god! I remember that. Yeah, that was in serve, dude. And didn't yep. wasn't it like Conrad or someone? Someone knew like. I, f- I swear, I, maybe we should ask Chad, but... Well, how'd y'all get off the ship? What was the story to get y'all so off the I th- ship? I think it was C- <laughs> CSO, if you remember, he's the one that said we weren't allowed to leave the ship. I think it was his call. And we were like, we were out of um, clean, like, uh, some type of cleaning supply or something we used. Simple and we're like, probably whatever. yeah, <laughs> probably Simple Green. Simple and green. <laughs> so Drew and I convinced him to let us go to the store and buy like bottles of Simple Green or whatever it was we needed. And he's like, all right, you know, go get that. You guys come right back. Well, so we're in this 7-Eleven or whatever, Walmart or whatever store we're at. We had to buy like a six-pack or case of beer. <laughs> we're sitting in the parking lot at, at, at Norfolk, and we're just like, <laughs> hammering <laughs> beers. Like, these are so disgusting. <laughs> but we just wanted to get drunk. <laughs> But that was our plan all along, too. Yeah, we, that's we were, all, like, we're like, dude, how can we were like prisoners? And we're like, dude, how can we just get five minutes of freedom to go drink a beer? Like, what what bullshit excuse can we come up with? And it worked. Savages, man. It worked, yeah. man. He, he let us off the ship. I mean, we got to the parking lot. We're like, these fucking idiots, dude. We're, we're not going to come back the same. <laughs> yeah, we were fucking hammered. But and I, I, I really think it was Chad, but someone they noticed and they were like, you motherfuckers. Yeah, it probably was. <clears throat> and he was cool about it. He didn't like. No, he didn't turn us. He didn't, say he didn't narc on us. He didn't yeah. buddy fuck us. I think he was just jealous that it, he didn't come up with the idea. Yeah. He's like, I think these so. sons of these sons of bitch fucking E4s came up with a goddamn chief idea. Genius plan. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> So in, it is, so in this when all of you are stuck on the ship scrubbing, Drew and I are fucking bound of beers in my Camaro. Me and yep. Josh were already on board drinking our own that we had smuggled weeks prior. No, we weren't. No, no don't, we didn't don't make that, that up. Yeah, why are you on. making up stories, Jim? What is this, sea stories? <laughs> 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 yeah. Remember the, uh, who was the um, bald-headed ETC? <laughs> Short guy, bald hair, bald head. Remember, a, he came in with a garbage bag and a radar too, and it was a bunch. Of, oh no, he was an EW. That was oh, was an EW. That yeah, was Chief. Yeah, Chief. And he's like, ah, he comes in with his black garbage bag, like a hefty bag. Yeah, yeah. And was that, like or is that a bunch of porno or... magazines? And we're like, what the hell? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't know who these are, but you know, get them off the ship. This and that. Those like, are ours. He's like, yeah, and I don't know who's fooling themselves thinking they need these, and it was a. Pack of Magnum condoms. <laughs> 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 they were like, boy, he's like, I don't know which one of you is fooling yourselves by thinking you need these. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Chad just <laughs> puts her laughing in his face. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, okay, you guys don't have to, you know, tell me now who did it, but whoever these are, when I leave, they better leave too. So he leaves and we're all looking at each other like, who's these finally, fucking yeah, things? Someone finally steps up and like, oh, those are mine. <laughs> That started a whole new sea story. We were like, bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. Was, yeah. <laughs> oh, I do remember that because we were like, I mean, it was Dirk Diggler to the Halloween party. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. It was like just four white guys in there and these big, like, Magnum XL condoms. And he's yeah. like, I know these aren't yours, you fuckers, but <laughs> we're like, damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I mean, you're white, credit. but fuck. Yeah, you got to be mean about it. <laughs> Yeah, don't gotta be a dick. <laughs> he was like, one of those like salty or maybe acting as you know, like some old <laughs> super salty dude. I remember yeah, that guy. Cool he was a funny guy. He was also yeah, like, he was a good dude. He was a good dude. Yeah. Drew, do you remember in combat uh up on our whiteboard or you know that, that class board we used to write on? Remember the B E counter? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. You remember that? It got to like 12 or something before we stopped counting. Yeah. I'm not going to, Drew, if you want to tell the story and leave people's names out of it, you can do it. But I think we may have talked about this before. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was uh, in combat where uh, someone was chowing down on some, uh, well, BE Booger Eater, basically. Yeah. Uh, Boogers Eating. And Boogers we Eating. But uh, yeah, so we used to be like, uh, hey, you know, on our comms. We'd be like, uh, there's another one. <laughs> they would look over like, hey, stop telling me, guys. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> oh, it was funny, man. I mean, you know, I think we've all we've all kind of seen it with our own eyes. So, yeah. it's, uh, Josh, do you, Josh, do you remember the time uh, I used to have, I had surgery on it. Do you remember I used to have that lump on my wrist? Dude, I, I, went, I went down to Senior Chief Burrell. Yeah. And I said, Hey, I got this, this lump and it's starting to hurt. You know, I, I you know, when I do push ups and stuff, it, it's bothering me. He goes, Oh, they call it a Bible bump. It was really, it's called a ganglion cyst. And he's like, Oh, we call it a Bible bump. You just smash it with the back of, you know, the, the binder side of a book and it'll break. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I go back to combat. Here's all these jocks down, you know, idiots down there. And I'm like, Oh, what did Chief Chief say? I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to break it. So Josh grabs this screwdriver that's like this <laughs> oh fucking long God. with a handle like this big on it. I put my hand on the desk and the lazy eye of Enoch <laughs> lands down on, uh, and he misses my wrist by like this much. I thought he broke every bone in my hand. I'm like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. He's like, oh, did I miss? I'm like, dude, you wouldn't even close. I just can't believe you were allowing me to do it. In the I mean, down there. So I, I agree. I think it was Drew. He like holds my hand and, and my oh wrist my so that there's only one spot to hit. And if he hits me, it's good. If he doesn't, he's hitting Drew. And that time he smacks it, dude. It, I felt it burst and like I just felt this rush of heat in my hand. It hurt oh. so fucking uh. bad. But it was gone. But it was gone. It came back later. But um, yeah, Josh, I think Josh did on purpose. To be you, honest, you went up there I, with the intentions of uh, hitting it with a with a. It was like a tech manual. So, yeah, so, that, but the tech say, manuals were like three ring binders or something, yeah. and so they they would then they form around your wrist. Yeah, they would just <laughs> fold it. This <laughs> so is medical. Of, this was medical advice from a medical staff on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they told me. It's called a well, yeah, Bible. The, I'm breaking like, they, with they say, they were all messed yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> like the ganglion says, you can hit it with a with, yeah. with the back of a Bible, and, and it. it it breaks it. And the reason it's only a Bible is because, you know, that's what some, everybody had in their house. It was a right. hard book. 100%. Yeah. Not a giant screwdriver. The biggest one. Not, it's not called a screwdriver bump. <laughs> but no. on the Donald Cook, that's what we call yeah, it. And, yeah, it was like a two-foot-long screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, gentlemen, I don't mean to interrupt, but I can't help but notice Drew's shirt. Drew, I like that shirt. Does. I saw it. Check that out. Yeah, Did I like you see that. that, Dave? Did you know that we have merch? I don't, but I would like to get one if, well, if it's for sale. It is actually for sale. You can actually uh, check for the link in show notes. Uh, today, uh, I do have the 1MC series on. Um, Adam was holding up the back of the shirt. In front of the shirt has our awesome Sea Stories logo. On the back of the shirt, there is a pizza, slice of pizza, and a slice, or no, not a slice of subs. So, uh, <laughs> how much alcohol is in this? Yeah. Um, and a sub sandwich. Um, it is inspired from our time in the Navy where we can hear the phrase echoing down the pier. Pizza and subs are available at the end of the pier. It was the best time in the evening for us. We would always go down there, grab us a, a delicious pizza. <laughs> you know, when you're, you're coming off a watch, it was fantastic. Um, yeah, so please check out our merch. Um, a portion of our sales uh, at the end of the year will go to uh, some veteran programs. So please do check that out, everyone. And if I'm, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. Where can I buy it at? Uh, we'll have some links in the show notes, but we'll okay. we'll we'll send them to you too, Dave. Awesome. Does that oh, ring a bell to you, Dave? The pizza. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah God. I, I... I remember Joe and I singing uh, uh, Greatest American Hero, and yeah. we tried to get them to let us sing it for uh, the wake-up call. <laughs> 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 and they never let us do it. Yeah. Like, come on, it'll be the greatest wake-up call in the world. And, and it never it never happened, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, yeah pizza, pizza and subs are now available. And I mean, it was a run. Yeah. Like, like, that was like, we don't have to eat this shit. All right, we're, we're on our way. 
those evening meals were probably the the bottom Hit of the best. barrel of meals yeah. in the Navy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when you were in port, the evening meals were not the best because the only people that were there eating dinner were the ones with the, the, the duty, duty section. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they weren't they weren't serving their good stuff. They were serving right. their leftovers from nine days ago. I remember <laughs> doing remember doing food on load. The one the first time I I think it was the first time I did food on load, but I was down where the mess decks were, there was like a basement that went down. That's where they like stored their food. I don't remember what yeah, it was yeah. called. Or not. But I remember being down at the bottom of those stairs and, and we're passing, you know, stuff, you know, in a line. And I remember I got a box of frozen, whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. And I look at it, it said, not for civilian or not fit for human consumption. Yeah, not fit for <laughs> something. Yeah, for military and prison use only. And yeah, I'm like, institutional the... purposes only. Yeah, I'm like, what are they feeding us here? Like, we're we're the United States military. We're eating the same shit people that murder people are eating. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it better than MREs, man. Fuck that. Oh yeah, yeah. I would have. T- you know, I I talked to you know Marine and Army vets. I'm like yeah, MREs. I'm like, ah, I had a hot meal every night. I don't know. Oh, well, it was good, but I had a hot meal. Gentlemen, we heard. Continuing the conversations afterwards, but as far as podcast purposes, we want to kind of start wrapping up. Uh, Drew, do you want to take care of the closing questions? Or? Uh, why don't you do those? All right. These are just uh, some quick quick closing questions for you, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, here on Sea Stories Podcast, we're big film buffs and being underway – we always like to catch oh, yeah. films in the break room and such as that. Is there any film that reminds you of being underway? Something Absolutely. that maybe you just catch all the time on. So anytime I see it on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, if you guys remember, Aston was the movie guy. He had like yeah. every DVD. Uh, he had those like binders you would open up and they were just DVDs or CDs filled. And he had those full of movies. And I remember I asked him one time, I'm like, I need, I, I need something that's going to take a while to watch. Like I had, what do you got? He's like, have you ever seen Lord of the Rings trilogy? Like, <laughs> never saw it. Dude, I didn't sleep. I was so tired. Because you worked, you were five and ten. So you were on watch for five hours. You had ten hours. And that whole ten hours I spent watching the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. And I was so butt tired when I went to watch. I'm like, man, I should have watched those movies, but they were so good. <laughs> um, so definitely Lord of the Rings. Every time I, I think of that movie or someone says it, I'm like, man, I remember watching that in my rack uh, on my laptop uh, during an underway. because. You know, there's nothing else to do. Um, I remember watching the the, the Red Sox come back down 3-1 um, in the American League Championship Series. I remember watching that because Conrad was such a Yankees fan. <laughs> he was so mad. Um, but yeah, that that was you know that was our entertainment. You know, you yeah. sit there and go down to Aston and be like, Aston, can I borrow a movie? And he had like a, I don't know where he got them all, but. Uh, he had yeah, every, um, every we movie. That was... When we were in Dog Run, like we bought everything that came out, basically. Yeah. And and uh, so Lord of the Rings trilogy, I watched it one after another after another, and I got done with the third one, and I'm like, my God, I got like 10 minutes. I got to go to watch. Son of a bitch. I haven't slept. I haven't showered. I haven't eaten. Oh, my God. Son of a bitch. It sucks. So I went to watch, and I'm like falling asleep on watch. Like, oh, my God, this sucks. But uh... So, yeah, that, that's the one movie that really reminds me of. I love it. Have you um, read the books? I haven't. I don't know how to read, so I, it's yeah, I just wait for the movies to come out. Right, it's so much easier. <laughs> um, back in the day, we used to be known as the Average Jet Joe Podcast, uh, and we created a, a playlist on pot- Spotify. We would ask our interviews to uh, give us three songs that would remind them of their time in the Navy. We would throw it on the playlist playlist on Spotify. And then, uh, you know, it's a great listen. Uh, so I hate to put you on the spot, but do you have three songs that remind you of your time in the Navy? Three songs. Uh, I have one for sure. Uh, but I'm going to try and save that for number one if I can remember two more. Um, God, I can't. I, the one for sure. We were down and we pulled into Mayport and we went to, um, remember the bar Bourbon Street? It was like five different bars in one. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were in like the 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 modern dance area, and the song "Yeah" by uh, Little yeah. John <laughs> came on. Joe's got these what? What were those shoes called with the E on the side? What were those? It's like some etnies. etnies. Yes. So he has these shoes on that aren't tied, and there's this group of girls kind of standing over, you know. And Joe's like, "Oh, this is my jam." 
And these girls kind of look over at us, and Joe starts doing this weird thing with his his foot, and he's like bouncing it back and forth. Well, then he makes the shoe go sideways, like his ankle broke. And he's like, oh, and he's acting like his like his ankle broke. And these girls are like, oh my god! And they, they think he just broke his ankle on the dance floor. I laugh <laughs> every time I hear the beginning of that song. I think of Joe's fucking <laughs> fake broken ankle, and the look on those poor girls' faces. Um, that song definitely reminds me, reminds me of, uh, being down on Bourbon Street. Um, God, if there's any others, do you guys remember any that at my house or anything that we used to listen to over and over? Andy and I sang, um, 18 in life during the Halloween party yeah, when Andy yeah. was playing the guitar and I was singing about 18 in life by Skid Row. Um, great song. Yeah, yeah, that was a good, that was a good song. Um, God, is there? There's another one. I don't remember know. any breakaway songs we used to do from. Oh, um, was it? Uh, well, they when we do the emergency breakaway after refueling, we used to do three doors down. Yeah. Um. The the captain always played that out on the speakers. Um. Which one? It was um. God, what's it called? Superman. Three, no, no, that one. No, that that's like, that's no. Nah, that's too cool. Um, yeah, it was yeah. um. Like when I'm gone, no, or no, something no, really. no, God, I can't, um, I'll look it up here, yeah. but yeah, that song was the emergency breakaway song. What foolish um, games, dude, that I asked Joe, no joke. Do I not send you pictures every time that comes on in my car? I'll be listening like the 90s station on Sirius XM and I'll be driving. Right. And it'll be foolish games will come out. I'll be like, oh, and I'll take, I'll pick up my phone. I'll take a picture of it and I'll send it <laughs> show because you did like yeah like recently i think yeah i just did that a couple months ago last time uh last time it uh came on so that song definitely reminds me of joe um when i'm gone is the is okay. the three doors yeah. down song that came on underway during the emergency breakaways but yeah definitely um that foolish games man that was when they did the rain and you squirted that thing in the air dude i laughed so damn hard <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna say uh foolish games uh, <laughs> when I'm gone, and yeah, oh, you awesome. know another one too. Another one too. I, I have to say it was uh, Barry Manilow because Josh used to make me listen to it in the Corvette going from thrift store to thrift store, and it was uh, what's the what's the Atlanta? Uh, what's that song? Josh used to make me listen to the Barry Manilow song. Um, something about. Uh, Georgia or something, Copacabana. We used to. <laughs> and an, oh, another one. I now now they're all coming back to me, and I apologize. Um, mm. Josh, do you remember girls when we had the wigs on and we went to Seven Eleven across the street and you had that generic little radio? Oh that, yeah, those guys yeah, offered I us drugs. That cool grocery store across the street. Yeah, there was a Seven Eleven. We were beer all the time, and those guys offered us like mushrooms or something, and you were jamming out to uh, Beastie Boys, girls. Yeah, yeah. These little cheap, like AM FM crappy little radio. Yeah, he put together. On. Yeah, we got these wigs on, and we go across the street, and he's listening to like is this big boombox and things like this big. <laughs> it's girls, <laughs> girls. These guys like, oh, you guys look like you're having fun. You guys want to buy some mushrooms or whatever it was, and we're like, uh, no, we're good, but thanks. Um, my last question before I kick it back over to Drew. So we could do the beer reviews or whatever he wants to do is, uh, you know, we've interviewed a bunch of people. I get this question from Andy. I got this question from Andy. We, up to this point, we've interviewed dozens of veterans with each from their own experiences, locations, years, et cetera. If I were to ask you, in your experience, what was the real Navy? What would you say? The real Navy, I never got to, I never got to uh, see. To be honest, the real Navy, you know, you're underway, you're fighting a war. Um, you know, you guys are gone for six months away from home, dealing with all that stress and anxiety and everything like that. And unfortunately, I never got to deal with that. Um, and, I, and I said earlier, that's probably my biggest regret of my naval career. Um, but when I think back on the Navy, I think of a, a camaraderie that I, I, I'll never find again. Uh, I'll never, I'll never find friends like you guys again. That was so much fun. And we all stuck together. We all had each other's back. And it didn't matter what it was. You know, we, we yeah. were always there for each other, no matter what. 
even if we were wrong, we were still at each other's back. And, and that's just something I, that'll never be replaced. It'll never uh, be forgotten. And to me, that's the Navy is a friendship and a camaraderie with your shipmates that goes far beyond. Like if you put me with four years with just some random people, it ain't going to be the same. It, it, it's just not. And uh, so, and I tell people, you know, when I was, I used to be a property manager at the YMCA here and people would ask me about the military and stuff like that. And I, and I would tell them it's not for everybody because it's not. Um, but it is a chance for you to experience something you're not going to experience anywhere else. I don't care where you work. I don't care what you do. You will never experience the camaraderie and the friendship and the loyalty you have to each other as you do in the military. And I think a lot of veterans suffer with trying to replace that mm. in the civilian world. You know, me, I'm always at the VA because of all the appointments I have and everything like that. And I see it. And, um, that's the military, like the military, a lot of fighting and, and a lot of uh, stress and a lot of uh, physical activity and things like that. But when you break it down, what is it? It's a group of people that are there for the same reasons, the same um, expectations, and you just do the job in front of you and you do it for each other. And th that to me is the Navy. That, that's what it's all about. It's about being there for each other, having each other's back. And and making sure everybody's taken care of, no matter what it is. I like that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> we should write that down and print that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's great, man. Um, that's what is... I took away from my career. That that's you know, I'll save it for later. But go ahead, go ahead, Drew. Oh no, I mean, all good, man. No, I I agree with you on and everything you said. You know. Um, you know, I, I hope I speak for all these guys. I'm sure they will say their piece and, and everything too, but, you know, it was a pleasure to serve with you. You know, uh, you'll always be one of my friends, just like all these guys here and, and like plenty of people we've had on this podcast, you know? Um, and it was, uh, dude, it was such a good time to have you on here, man. Um, I, I appreciate it more than anything guys. I really do. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I would love to have you back. I think, um, you know, I'm going to try and get you back on doing something. Uh, I'm retired, man. Let me know. I got fun. nothing to do. <laughs> I play video games for my life. That's what I do. So uh, yeah. I'll come back anytime you guys want. I, I, you can write you guys. Hot takes I love you guys. Our, I, yeah. You can write hot takes on our weekly uh, football breakdown. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I'll start uh, watching Basically, we'll the just video talk about how good the Chiefs are the whole time. But oh, fuck that! Come on, no. you mean the Taylor Swifts? Come on. <laughs> I don't no, know but hey, well, Chiefs. we um we we are going to really try and have a fantasy football league next year. So if you're in, oh, in, I'm in 100. percent Oh, so perfect. We will get you in, and I guess we'll really have to push that now too, since it's like being recorded. Right. Um, I got it on tape now. <laughs> Very and good. I'm gonna whoop your ass in, in NCAA. Good. I will stream that shit so everybody can see how much better I've gotten. I mm, haven't. Won't be I good enough. I haven't. I've, I haven't gotten any better. <laughs> well, it hasn't been a game, so you. No, and I, I suck at Madden, so I, I can't tell you. I'm. Oh, I'm good at Madden. I'm gonna be good at that. I, I don't play Madden, so uh, I gotta start practicing here. Well, we will see, and everyone, please look for that because uh, we will oh, stream uh, that. And, I will make sure everybody knows, <laughs> and it'll be All live, right. so you guys can jump in chat and, and talk smack to to both uh, Drew and myself while it's going on, and place bets. Make it a bet. Oh yeah, I like that. Every um, touchdown score, you got to take a shot. Oof! I score a touchdown, Drew. You got to take a shot. Uh, I'll be completely sober. You game. will, and I'll be hammered by the first end of the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, being hammered, let's talk about these beers that we've been drinking. Uh, you know, if you can call sours beers, can you? Come on, no, they're no. good. No, listen. Um, so, Dave, we're going to go around the room. Uh, and I say room because why not? Um, and we're going to discuss uh, our beer, talk about it, what we liked about it. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, so uh, you'll uh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> So, um, oh, we do rate them. We rate them um, on a scale from one to five. Is that correct? Ball caps. Yeah. Um, yeah but, you know, and you uh, can do, uh, you know, 0. 0.5 uh, at the, at you know. Increments. 
at the yeah 0.5 increments makes sense yeah 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 yeah. sweet all right well i'll kick it off um since i was hosting this uh pretty awesome disaster uh i am uh, i was kidding (laughs) (laughs) i i'm drinking the blueberry boyfriend from uh, prairie artisan ales uh this is a sour ale with blueberries and lemon zest um i chose this because i really figured i would like this beer um because of uh well i love blueberries and lemon zest Same. weirdly enough you love boyfriends and i love <laughs> blue boyfriends and dave is my boyfriend my yes, sea boyfriend sir. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> my sea sea boyfriend. We were don't uh, don't date don't knock it. Fine, don't be jealous. Everybody's, everybody's got to have a sea boyfriend. Don't be jealous. <laughs> uh, this this bad boy is five point four ABV, uh, so a little bit lower than I normally shoot for. But um, <clears throat> I'm actually drinking a second one of these, and I will probably have no problem finishing this this uh, this four pack i think it was so i'm i'm 100 percent surprised by how much i've enjoyed this this Ooh, awesome. uh, beer awesome um i i'm probably gonna have to try more sours now um some are good really, some are bad I some I've, I've, I've had bad ones you yeah, know but some I think, bad ones out there i think you have to look for what what interests you in a sour don't go crazy uh uh that's my advice being a novice now in the sour realm <laughs> um, but, uh, this beer, I think I would take to the beach 100%. Um, and I would bring to a beach party and a pool party. I'm going to give this one a, uh, 4.0. I'll take it. 4.0. I feel like this Adam, is three for me. Adam, you're next. Yeah. Once again, I am drinking from brewery, brewery, Omi, Omi gang, <laughs> the, uh, dream patch fruited sour. Yeah. With cherry, blueberry, and raspberry, 6.5% ABV. So this is still like a breakfast beer for Drew. Um, Like I said, I don't actively look for sours, but I'm also, I'm not anything against them. I think they're more of a summer beer. I think they're best when they're ice cold. Uh, Mm -hmm. With all that being said, this was actually a pretty good beer. Um, I would actually drink it again. And I would take it to a party if the occasion called for it. Um, the thing with sours is I don't think you could have too many in one sitting before the sweetness and the sourness gets to you. Uh, and uh, so with all that being said, I give it a really high, the highest and most respectable 3.5. Like, I'll take it. It's a solid beer. Uh, Andy, why don't you remind everybody what you're drinking and let us hear your thoughts. Yeah, I got the Orange Crush IPA from Back Bay <laughs> Brewing. Um, back by Brew House here in Virginia Beach. Uh, it's a crushable and tropical IPA uh, inspired by the legendary Virginia Beach Orange Crush cocktail, according to the can. Ooh. Uh, you know, brewed with uh, loads of orange peel, blood orange puree, and late additions of cashmere and citra hops um, for a citrus, well balanced, uh, you know, IPA. Um, you know, it's well documented on the show how I feel about IPAs. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's why I didn't choose IPAs, and you went and got one. I try to help you out, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the it's the the all I can think of is the Keystone Light uh, bitter beer face commercials. <laughs> you know, but um, there's a negative thought, review. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> it seemed to be a little bit better when it warmed up. When I was getting through the first can, I don't know. And then the second one seems better, but, um, you know, it's not my thing. So I gave it a 275. Higher than I would think from Andy. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I was expecting a 1.0. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the second half when it warmed up, I don't know, it got a little bit better. It's 6.1%. So it's not super heavy, but like, I don't know. Whatever, but Joe, what were you drinking, man? I'd like to go in this saying that I would never probably ever really judge a beer like really bad just because I don't like a certain type of beer. Yeah. <clears throat> but, I don't know exactly how a good one tastes or a bad one tastes, to be honest with you. Uh, so with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I'm drinking a uh, free state beer. It's called Guavitas Sour. And it says, uh, Guavitas Sour takes you to the tropics with exotic guava and lively tartness. What is a guava? I it's a know. it's some sort of uh, uh, some kind of tropical fruit. fruit? Or yeah, they don't. They don't right. believe they're indigenous before? to the United States. I wonder what it tastes like. Oh, I'm sh- probably fruity. <laughs> I guess uh, it's a solemnly sour, tasty tart, and a and seriously delicious is what the can says. Oh. And uh, you know, it's really. I mean. It's not my thing. I, I can assure you that this isn't this isn't what I would be doing on the weekends or. Uh, or well, I mean, you're a Kansas City fan. I don't expect you to I do am. anything besides White Claw. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's hard lemonade all day. Every oh, day. my bad. I forgot. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, with that being said, like it, it's not, it's not, it wasn't horrible. Just like I'm not really big into like the sour thing. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just don't really like sour that much anyway. I mean, I like the sour uh, bright crawlers <laughs> in a movie. Or about sour worms? You like sour worms? Yeah, like sour sour worms? patch kids, right? Yeah, sour right. patch kids. I like those. I don't. Really, <laughs> I'm not really a warheads guy. So, uh, but I'll eat one every now and again. Once the sour wears off, they're pretty delicious. Um, so with that being said, you know, I'm not, but I, I'm going to give it a three just because I'm not going to shit on a beer, uh, just because I don't, I don't completely like it. I think yeah. it, was a, it was good enough. It got me through and it, I didn't like throw up or anything. So it wasn't, yeah. And I, yeah, I think it deserves more. I think it deserves more probably than like a two and a half. But uh, I'm going to give it a three just because, like, you know, I don't know what a good one is. I don't know what a bad one is. And yeah, this you got to try it. This one was okay. Yeah. I, I would drink this again. I'm not ordering it. But if someone was like, Hey, I brought bro, six of these. It, you want one? It, it looks like you need a beer really bad. Like, you've been raking a lot of leaves. Here, this is all I have. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll take it. I, hey, I'll take it. I ain't buying any more. I'll send you some. <laughs> All right, who's next? Josh. Josh, Josh you're I up. I think I'm next. I'm trying to keep the dog at bay. But hey, I'm drinking real quick. I'm drinking. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I drinking? Let me unzip this koozie. Oh, here we go. Best made pick sour pickle. Oh, you're drinking beer. The pickle stuff. Yeah, that's pretty wild, man. It's good. So that's a collaboration between a brewery here in Texas and a place that makes pickles here in Texas. I think uh, they have that at my liquor store down the street. I can't even tell you. It's just like drinking pickle juice, carbonated pickle juice. Uh, really? I think it would be good for a recovery beer. Uh, mm. It's five and a half percent alcohol. When I would say recovery beer, like maybe like after a gym workout, you know, would be good. What if you mixed uh, it with uh, tomato juice? Or you know, V8? that would be V8. something I would be curious to. I was thinking, I was like, it might be a good mixer. So I need to experiment with like, mi- I think like it would a red beer it with some tomato juice, man. Yeah, yeah it would be awesome. I used uh, to work at a pickle factory. I got fired though. <laughs> I've stuck my finger in the pickle slicer. Yeah. <laughs> she Ooh. got fired too, but hey. Um, <laughs> hey, not, not my joke. I stole it from <laughs> Ron White, but hey, it, it felt <laughs> like it was fitting. Dude, I'm going to get it a solid 3.5. Dude, I like this. Oh, beer. It didn't it. give me no acid reflux. Um, I just, I don't know if I could drink a whole six pack. I'm just like three into it, and this is probably gonna be my last one for the night. So, it's a good beer for uh, be... pregnant ladies. Just kidding. It would be. Just oh. kidding. Oh. Honey, honey, I'm craving I would pickles. Be, I would love Take to mix this. it with some, like with some tomato juice or some clamatas or. I think it would be Bloody good. Mary in a Bloody Mary. Yeah, I think it would be good. Uh, that, yeah, the, you the might, be right. Bloody you might be right. Might be right. I'm gonna have to experiment. I'll report back. Yeah, let me know. Cool, Dave, you're up, buddy. Oh, I'm. I got it. I get to go too. Yeah, man, you're the guest <laughs> no, of honor. You're, you're, the, last. you're the most important one. We have to get Shit, your opinion I, for I sure. Wish, I, wish. <laughs> uh, I am uh, drinking Sour Monkey by Victory. Um, mm. uh, this is nine point five percent. I don't drink anymore, and I'm two and a half in, and I'm feeling it. 
it's not it's not it's my favorite sour beer um unfortunately i wish it was less alcohol so i can enjoy it more often um uh but i think it's pretty good ryan geist if you've ever heard of that was the first sour beer i ever had it was at a bar and uh, i kind of liked it so i start I, that kind of got me on the sour uh beer kick and like i said i've had some bad ones so you know if, if you picked a bad one i'm sorry um you know don't to don't shoo away sour beers because you had a bad one there are some decent ones out there um but sour monkey's pretty potent it, it's um yeah, it's not for everybody. Where's the I wanted brewery to sh- out of? Victory? I'm not sure where Victory's out of. We can find Josh, out Google that. that. Josh, Google that. Um, all I can tell you is it's potent, uh, like 9.5%. Nine, nine it's it's not something, you know, you're going to drink a six-pack and go, you know, driving around and, and having a cold time. You're going to drink a six-pack and go to bed. But, um, I, you know, and Drew, you know, he said, he goes, oh, you got to pick the theme. I'm like, oh, like, what, like 80s or like, oh, what do you mean theme? Like, what do I get? What do we got to do? We got to dress up? And mm-hmm. he's like, no, you get to pick the beer. And I, so I wanted to pick something off the wall. You know, I didn't want to do the regular, you know, lagers and stuff that we used to drink all the time when we were all together. Well, looks like Victory is brewed out of Pennsylvania. And there's a brewery in North Carolina, too. Oh, okay. Off, also. And they make a lot of different ones. They have a Christmas ale called Christmas Monkey or something like that. It's called. So they got a bunch of different ones. I don't know. Monkey must be their thing. Um, but yeah, I like it. I give it a out of five. I I would give it. I'd give it a three point five. I'm not going to say it's my favorite beer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's tolerable. It, it's potent. If you want to get drunk fast and you, and you just want to drink a six pack, go get it. Um, but I, I I wanted something different. I wanted something maybe you guys. Nobody's ever brought up on the show, or at least not often. So that's why I, I picked it. I'm always it into adventuring out. Yeah, I try to, you know, think outside the box. Yeah. I wish I could remembered what Drew and I drank during insert because I would have picked that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Drew, I forgot that's about fun, that story. Man. I'm so glad you reminded me because I completely forgot about that story. Was it just like them. like an orange cream? They would have sold it like a uh, gas station, or yeah. was it a it, liquor store, or what? No, I, think I think it was like a. It was like a. Like Grocery store. Like store, yeah, like a food lion. Yeah, so yeah. it would have like been that. it would have been cheap wine. I mean, it like was, narrowing this down, like it I was mean, an we can orange. Get this. Was it was it was it the Schmirnoff orange cream shit that they have seen them sell at the liquor store? Is it like it a Mad Dog type of? No, it definitely. It wasn't a bottle like Mad Dog. It was a beer. It was like a six pack or, yeah. or something we bought. Um, hmm. It was like an orange peel beer or something. Can or bottle. I think it was a bottle. I feel like it was like a, a clear bottle. Like okay. you could like very much tell it was one boring. bottle or there yeah, was okay. six. There was, there was six of them. I okay. think it was a six pack. It was a six pack. Because I remember yeah. we, we chugged three and it was like we were regretting it after yes. half of the first one. Walking back up the pier like, what the hell did we just do? Yeah, yeah I mean, we was, chugged them in like three minutes. Yeah. Like we got okay, act normal, Drew. Act normal, damn it. <laughs> we gotta get back it, on the ship. It was like not even it was like hitting us as we were walking on the ship. And it wasn't it was like, like oh, we were walking shit. on the ship on a Saturday night, like you know, for whatever reason. It was in surf. Nobody was allowed to leave. Yeah. And here we are walking back to the ship drunk. Like we had no excuse if somebody would have stopped us, if the if the OOD would have said, uh, where have you guys been? We we seriously would have had no answer. Well, we had we had a bag of uh, yeah we had a bag of cleaner. simple cleaner and some sponges or whatever sponges. that was. But we, we just had bought no, random shit. We had no reason why. Like, oh, we drank simple green on the way in. I don't know. Like, we had no reason to be drunk because nobody's allowed to leave the ship. And there's there's true not coming in hammered. Oh, greeny greeny weenies is another term that yeah I greeny use. weenies those those scrubby pads yeah. I think we bought like a pack of those and, and some simple grand. I think it was what everything you could probably find on the ship already. We were just like, we need to find more of it. Yeah. It. <laughs> it was just an excuse for us to go get drunk. Yeah. Because you had to be able to get uh, it. Still. Yeah. We I just need to get off the still. ship. What do you call them? Green yes, anything. Anything. The little green um, scrubby pads? But, but, yeah. yeah, but okay, okay. Do What do you call them now, Adam? Do you just call know. them greenies or I still call them greenies. Or- <laughs> Greenie, you still call them greeny weenies? I think I do. I don't. I haven't. I haven't used one for a while, but grow up, Stephen <laughs> Schmuckatelli. <laughs> Last time I saw a greeny weenie, I was brooming water off of a deck of a ship in the middle oh, of a sh- fucking thunderstorm. Like <laughs> people ask, Adam, you said what's the navy like? That's what the in the middle of a goddamn rainstorm, <laughs> pouring rain. You're out there on the deck. Sh- Broom in a puddle that never ends. That's the real Navy. 
You right, kids watching at home, you want to join the Navy? <laughs> Practice. Go out in your driveway and start brushing water in the middle of a thunderstorm. You'll be you'll be Joe Navy in no time. You're right. <laughs> or how about when they're, you're trying to brush water off and the genius pulls out the fire hose and starts right and just starts to push adding water it. off yeah. with more water? Like, right. Yeah. I don't understand what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me counter, the science. Counterintuitive here. What are we doing? Ah <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Well, it was to get the salt water off. No, but this the exterior is fire hoses supplied salt fresh water. water. Or were they? No, they were salt water. I, don't know, I, thought that, I thought fresh water was inside. Yeah, that was inside, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And then exterior ones were all salt water. All salt water. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, that's that'd be st- it's <laughs> counterintuitive. It's like, uh, might as well scoop buckets of salt in the ocean. Fresh water on the deck. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, fresh well, I guess water. Maybe so. Down. Maybe you're right. Maybe there was fresh water coming out of those. There had to be. Yeah, I'll we had fresh that. water on the ship. I'll leave like that for you, East Was guys. <laughs> Drew, you figure out how to how you want to close this out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do have one more order of business, and that is uh, we get fireside chat. Um, so we each get uh, two minutes to talk about whatever we want, plug whatever we want, uh, talk shit about whatever we want. Um, so. Do I need uh, to use the restroom real quick before this happens? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. This yeah, this yeah. sour monkey's no joke. My bladder is like mm-hmm. if I had a bucket right now, I'd already be peeing. Yeah, go for it. Can I have two helmet. minutes? <laughs> you know, go for it. That's another story. Get the out. Bat, oh, Get I'll, out. Be right back. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Give me two Get minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I remember a time if Adam's gonna take a break. Mm. I was on the the we were in port. And I had the Remember the watch that was in the middle of the night? What was it, like 22 to 03 or something was the watch? Yeah. The whatever. last five-hour watch Mid-one. before the short four-hour one? Yeah. And I had the, the pier side sentry, so I was down checking IDs and stuff. And it's middle of the night, and I had taken a um, hydroxy-cut pill because it was supposed to give you energy. And one of our, our shipmates says, oh, dude, take one or two of these or whatever. He goes, this will give you the energy to get through the night. Because we had run drills all night and everything. I hadn't got a nap in or anything like that. So I took this hydroxy cut. I go down to the end of the pier. About an hour in, man, I had to shit like nobody's business. And I know the second, there's a porta potty You remember that there was like little guard shacks that mm-hmm. were there at the end of the pier. So it, it's a light rain coming down. So I'm kind of in the guard shack. Right across the pier, 20 feet from me is a, is a porta potty I'm like, man, if I can just go shit in there, I, man, I, I, but I knew some salty senior chief would walk up and I wouldn't be there to check his ID. So I'm standing in the guard shack and I'm like, I, I got like, there's no waiting. This wasn't going to, four hours, not going to happen. So I looked around, there was a battle helmet. I thought I'll shit in the battle helmet and I'll throw it in the ocean. Fuck it. Nobody's going to know it's my way to do a DNA test on the crap. <laughs> and I'm like, I oh, mean, I can't do that. Somebody walks up and I got my pants down around my freaking knees and I'm taking a shit. Like, how am I going to explain this? Like, I'm going to get kicked out of the Navy for it. I can't do that. So I'm sitting I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, I got to go. Back. I got to go. So there was a big Gatorade bottle, like a big Gatorade, like tub that you put a bunch of water in for a team, like a football team could drink out of. <laughs> there was no water in it. I'm like, dude, I'll just shit in the Gatorade bottle or this, you know, this big Gatorade bucket. I'm like, nobody's going to know. So I'm like, man, I can't do that. I called my wife. It's like, you know, it's like freaking midnight or whatever it was, 11 o'clock at night, whatever it was. I called her, I wake her up. I'm like, hey, listen, don't ask any questions. Bring me a new pair of skivvies and a new pair of, of my dungaree pants. She's like, why? What's going on? I'm like, I just need it. I'm calling for the officer of the watch or whatever he was called, the roamer, the little rover that went around. Chief of the yeah. guard or whatever. I think. Yeah, chief of the guard. That's it. I'm like, chief of the guard, pier six, sentry. No answer. I'm like motherfucker, yeah. dude. I need I need someone to come relieve me. This ain't gonna happen. Call him again. Call him again. Finally, he's one peer down, bullshitting with the person down there. Finally, he answers. I'm like, I I, I, I need you down here, pier six, immediately. I see this. It's a light rain, nothing major, and he's putting on his rain gear, and I can see him. I'm like, this son of a bitch. Finally, he makes his way down here. I had already put my pants in battle gear mode. Like I took my socks over my pants. I was going to shit my pants and just get rid of them and give them to my wife and be like, throw these away on your way home or something. I don't know what to tell you. I, I got to do what I got to do. So when I couldn't get a hold of them and I, in the moment I picked up the phone and I called my wife, I had decided in my brain, I'm shitting myself as an adult. This is happening. This is it. <laughs> well, my, my brain 
for some reason said, and, and listen, motherfucker, we're not doing this. We're not shitting our own pants at 28, 29 years old. It's not happening. So as I'm trying to poop, I can't. And I'm like, this is so fucked up. I got to shit so bad. Finally, this son of a bitch walks down. And I said, dude, take the watch for five. I got to go. I got to go to the bathroom. He's like, oh, okay, okay. You may get your duty belt. I was like, you bread a nine. It's around. I'm struggling to get this damn belt off. I'm like, son of a bitch. And, I, and now your brain, it sees the toilet. Yeah. Oh, so it knows. Hey, it's listening up. Let's go ahead. Yeah. You wanted to go. Let's go. And now We're I'm almost out. here. Yeah. Now I'm like, no, motherfucker, wait. Time out. Time out. 30 second time out. Hold on. We're not ready. And I'm I'm struggling to get this duty belt off. And I'm about to I got it's peaking. I'm like, son of a bitch. I dropped the duty belt. Thank God the gun caught on the side of the toilet before I dropped my whole duty belt down a porta potty. How am I gonna fucking explain that? I just turned hey, it there's, in. There's a gun and there's yeah, go, I couldn't get it out. It was too like I had to jump down there and get like Indiana Jones. Like, how am I gonna get this thing out of there? Gotta do what I gotta do. So Dude, I got this thing off. It falls, and I'm like, oh, shit. Thank God the gun caught on the toilet seat. I grab the duty belt. I throw it down. The second I got my pants past the bum hole, it, it let go. And <laughs> I destroyed that porta potty But I felt so good. And like, I didn't care. And then... As I get done, like I, I like I didn't even sit down on the toilet because I had splattered the seat, the back. Like I wasn't gonna sit there in my own shit. So when I got done, I looked down and there's no fucking toilet paper <laughs> in the goddamn porta potty. And it's a mess. Like I needed six rolls to clean this up. And I get none. I didn't have a single sheet. I didn't could even wipe my own ass. So I took off my socks. And I put them on like mittens. <laughs> clean, clean one, clean the other, threw them down the hole, stood the rest of the watch with no socks on, oh. just my bare feet and my boots. So I go in there and I tell the, I, I warned the son of a bitch. I said, don't go in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're going to have to take that porta potty home. They're going to have to come <laughs> get it and, and just remove it from service. This guy doesn't believe me. And says, well, I'm gonna, I got to take a piss. Okay, I warned you. Walked <laughs> in, the door didn't even close all the way. Walked back Damn. out, looked at me, goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I said, hey, man, I told you not to go in there. So that's my battle helmet story about the Navy. Um, yeah, you want to know the real Navy? That's the real Navy. Shit your <laughs> pants because you're not allowed to go in the porta potty in case some salty senior chief comes up and wants you to check his ID. Like, and they would never believe you if you told them, like, I was going to shit my pants. No, they would have said you could have you could help. You could have held it longer. You could have waited till, till you know. Yeah, till three before. in the morning. I it's mean, like Al-Qaeda was, we night. caught them in the parking lot. Mm. They were, we caught Al-Qaeda. They were back there. They were stealing hubcaps. <laughs> they saw the opportunity. They Where were you? <laughs> Where were you? You were taking a shit. They ran in. <laughs> Look what you did. <laughs> I almost shit in a battle home and threw in the ocean. Yeah. <clears throat> and a Gatorade. And a Gatorade story I've ever heard so far. Yeah. That's that was amazing. so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> Eileen's still at She provides. She's like, you remember the time you had called me up to bring you some underwear? I'm like, yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Thank God I didn't need it. Because I had to call her right away and be like, hey, did you leave that? She's like, no. I'm like, all right, don't. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Destroyed a porta potty, but I'm good. Lost some socks. But I can handle that. I can. I can feel. I can feel the anxiety. The, oh, it was terrible. Your head is just. And, and I got so mad when I looked down at the next pier, which would have been like Pier Seven or whatever the next pier down is. I'm like, that son of a bitch is standing there, and he's just not answering the call. I'm like, he doesn't understand what's going on down here. He doesn't understand the emergency I have. So, yeah, that's the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. All right. Uh, so we are going to uh, roll into our fireside chat now um, where, like I said, we get to talk uh, two minutes uh, about anything you want uh, about anything you want at all. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, as, as always take care of yourselves uh, mentally and physically. Um, and if you have any, um, uh, uh 
any thoughts or any problems you need help with, please contact us, contact me. You can find me on Facebook um, and through the Sea Stories uh, podcast. Um, so I am, man, I, I've really fallen very deep in love with soccer. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, uh, I, I'm, I can't stop watching it. I love watching all of it. Um, yeah, man. Uh, unfortunately, Orlando City, who I've been a fan of for a while, is not doing very well right now. Um, so that does suck. But I encourage everyone, if you haven't watched soccer, please give it a watch. It is a lot of fun, um, especially watching really good teams. And um, yeah, fuck off. Fucking L.A. <laughs> um, <laughs> Adam showing uh, the champion ring for, uh, what is that, Seattle? Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we haven't quite won one yet, but you know it's it's coming. Um, but anyway, listen, uh, I think soccer is an amazing game. It's a lot of fun to watch. There's some really really talented teams and players out there. Um, I know everyone talks about hey, uh, the scores whatever two to three. Um, you know what? Uh, uh, in an NFL game, fourteen to twenty one is also fucking two to three. So <clears throat> you know, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh but listen yeah uh watch watch some more soccer take care of yourselves do something great for yourself and um yeah man i'm gonna kick it over to adam but he isn't there so <laughs> no i'm just kidding adam man what's up uh four things if i can remember them all uh the shogun series on fx is pretty dope i like it i don't even i even watched the japanese version i think there's an english dub uh, number two, I'm a, like a super fan of Bethesda Softworks, the video game company, and I'm all in on the, uh, the Fallout, uh, series that's coming out on Amazon. Like, I might even do, like, blog posts about it. Like, I'm that jacked in. I'm, like, super into that movie. Nice. Um... <laughs> Uh, the uh, Acolyte trailer for Star Wars came out. Drew, I don't know if you saw that. That looks pretty legit. And uh, dang it, I can't think of the fourth thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, my brother had uh, season passes to, or he's a season ticket holder for Seattle Sounders. And I was at that championship game and he gave me a ring and like, I kept the new to Yeah, MLS is pretty dope. I like it. Um, That's it for me. Andy? Read um, the hardest working man in Virginia or something. <laughs> um, I heard about know. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, come out to Push Comedy Theater on the weekends for some great improv shows. Um, or take a class there at Teaching Theater. I'm just starting my third level improv, doing Heralds and learning about that form. Um, you can also catch me when I'm not here on um, Sea Stories Podcast or Seaman on Film. I'm on Spectacular Inc. Radio uh, doing that podcast. And those talented dudes, uh, where the, they're the first black cinematic comic universe or whatever. Like we're working on a, like a TV show, stage play, like this whole thing that I got going. Um, also, our D and D show that me and my buddies are working on, we're gonna launch in April, so that'll be out soon, or maybe by the time you hear this, uh, look for D and D abridged on YouTube. We'll have uh, weekly releases. Basically, we have three different groups um, going through. Like we're all doing this same campaign, starting in different places. So check that out. Um, and you know, the theme of the year is be prepared. So it's March. Be prepared for summer. Be prepared for you know spring, fall, winter season, election season, everything. It's it could be an interesting year. Be prepared. Joe.
Well, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I will tell you this. Aquaman 2 is fucking terrible. I mean, it is so bad that what makes it even the what makes it the worst is that like they tried to like do pandering to like a specific cause and it just like went over like a like even like people that are like totally into like the, the causes and all that shit are like shut the fuck up dude. Like this is a terrible movie. You did a terrible job of advocating. As a matter of fact, I'm going to throw more shit into the Persian Gulf when I'm on deployment. <laughs> <laughs> Just to kill Aquaman. <laughs> You're an advocate for littering the ocean. That's what kind of movie you just made. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, it was embarrassing. Like, Jason Momoa now is like, fuck it, dude. I'm just going to do commercials with Zach Braff. Right? Uh <laughs> You know, he's just like, dude, I'm like, I can't go back to Hollywood. They're gonna laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, dude, we are. That bad. Okay. It's not your fault, man. I guess it's not. You I'm tried not to say yeehaw bad. and woo and stuff. He could just read his lines on the back of do. a neon <laughs> unicorn uh, seahorse or whatever. But man, what a bad movie! What a bad, bad movie. You should be, it is bad. You should feel bad for making it. Um, outside of that, um, wow. Curb Your Enthusiasm. What a show. New season's been out. I've been watching that uh, every, every week. So I, re- I recommend Curb Your Enthusiasm to anyone that, that likes Seinfeld or kind of likes that type of humor yeah curb your enthusiasm after that man i'm not really playing any games or anything uh it's concert season it's coming up for us in the midwest you know the weather's turning so uh get out there maybe go see a show or something cage the elephant's doing a tour so maybe go check that out if you guys want some real rock and roll and i'm out we don't promote caging elephants we should let them run free (laughs) that is actually true good point Josh, uh, why don't you tell us about all the things that interest Dude, you? I don't know about Aquaman, the movie, but I saw Awkward Women, the movie. It was like it's an underwater porno thing. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really cool. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> I actually have a lot Man. of jokes that are way inappropriate. I really don't have it much to say. I really don't have anything coming to my head. Um, man, you know, I always try to be deep and thoughtful, but, um, you know, I guess just try to take a moment and live in the moment and look around and look what you have and appreciate it. And cause there's people that don't have it near what we have. So, um, or look around you, look around you and there's somebody out there that loves you. I guarantee it. I promise you there's somebody out there that does. So anyways. Uh, I hope everybody has a good night, day, evening, morning, whatever. And uh, I'm keeping it short, and I'm out. Dave, you're up. Oh, shit, I get to go, too. Of course. (laughs) Uh, You're part of the show. As far as TV shows go, I don't know if you guys have seen. I I watched uh, the first six seasons of SEAL Team. I don't know if you guys saw that on Paramount+. Plus. Is that good? Phenomenal. I'll check it out. I'm going to say the greatest series I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. Honestly, the, we're done. Listen, with it. <laughs> and there, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. One of the guys on the show is a real Navy SEAL or was a real Navy SEAL. So they're very, he made sure that their movements and everything else was clean. They didn't muzzle sweep each other. So that part of it was really cool. But it's the only show I've ever seen that tackles the real problems of the military. I'm talking about marriage, the VA, when you get out, things like that. If you haven't watched it, give it a chance. It is the season seven's coming out because of the writer strike. It's been postponed, okay. um, but it's on Paramount Plus. Uh, it's called Seal Team, not the Seal Team, just a Seal Team. Um, David Bjorquez or whatever his name is, the dude Bones, that played Angel in Bones, yeah, Orianus or whatever. David Borquez or whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. He plays uh, Master Chief uh, Jason Hayes. 
phenomenal show. I'm not kidding you. Just very well done, very well written. Uh, Max Theriot, who is now on uh, Fire Country, if anybody watches that, he played in it. It's about uh, it's about a, a Delta, or I'm sorry, a um, SEAL Team Six team. So uh, Tier One operators, just a good show. It tackles a lot of the outside of the Navy stuff, the marriages, the complications with that. Mm. Um, like I said, the VA and the complications of that just an awesome, awesome show. So talking about TV shows, I love that. Um, uh, as movies go, um, uh, if you've never seen The Last Dragon from the 80s, it's probably the greatest movie ever made. Um, you know, Bruce Lee, Roy in the Glow. If you can't beat it. Um, as far as me personally, I don't really have much going on. I do. I'm going to start streaming a little more here on, on a kick. Um, and YouTube. So when Drew and I decide to play in CAA, you guys will get to watch that. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, just to get serious just for a quick moment before we end, um, I, as, as a disabled veteran that suffers from uh, a lot of uh, depression and things like that, um, reach out to, to each other. Make sure you're okay. Uh, if you're not, talk to someone. I bowed it up for a long time inside, and uh, I thought that was the best way to deal with it. And then I realized it wasn't. Um, so talk to someone, talk to your wife, your friend, your dad, your son, you know, anybody you know that that, that you know will listen. Um, it's okay not to be okay, um, but you'll get through it one day at a time. You'll get through it. You have, like Josh said, you have people out there that love you, whether you know it or not. So um, yeah, reach out to each other, ask each other how you're doing. Um, 22 a day is way too many. Um, so I appreciate, you know, you guys having me on here and this was awesome. This, this, I, one of the best nights I've had in a long time. So thank you. Oh, thank wow. you guys. Yeah, man, you're welcome. <clears throat> and if you have any questions about the VA, if you're trying to, um, you know, push some claims forward and you're having trouble or the VA saying a no, and you don't know where to go, reach out. Uh, you can email me, uh, Dr. Steele, my initials, Dr. Steele, 1976 at at.com. You can ask me any questions you want. I've been through the process for 16, 17 years now. Um, I am 100% finally. It was a fight, but uh, don't give up. The VA wants you to give up. The government wants you to give up. Don't give up. Keep fighting for what you deserve. Uh, you fought. You went to war. You suffered. Fight for it because you deserve it. Don't give up. And uh, tell someone you love them. Because that might be the difference in their day. Yeah. That's all I got. Hell yeah. Well, Dave, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. Dave Steele. A blast. A uh, steel dick Dave. Yes, sir. That's, that was my uh, <laughs> porno name. I just never made it into the porno. Right. <laughs> wasted. What a wasted porno name. Right? Miss my Don't name. even wear magnums. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right, everyone. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Peace. Love you guys.